Nothing? What's going on? Woo! I'm the man who has the ball. I'm the man who can throw it faster than fuck. So that is why I am better than everyone in the world. Kiss my ass and suck my dick. Oh no, you can't. 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 Until I get my vengeance, I will never end this mayhem. Oh no, you can't. I'm a mercenary, you ain't got a pair of you. Oh no, you can't. 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 Oh no, you there's no second chances, you will do the dance of sorrow. Oh no, you did. 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 Didn't you? Oh no, you did. Baby, what you owe me. So now it is over for you. You try to piss me, now you're gonna wish you were dead. Oh no, you did. After I deliver, your blood will be a river of red. Oh no, you did. Better be aware when no one's there to defend you. Oh no, you did. So many ways to kill, it's gonna be a thrill to end you. Oh no, you did. 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 Didn't you? Oh no, you did. Oh no, you did. Oh no, you did. Didn't you? Oh no, you did. 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 Oh no, you that's right, all new two hours. Two hours of cauliflower for the history of listening pleasure. Remember, our call number is 347 326 9741. 347 326 9741. I am Brian the Butcher Brown, your host. Joined as always by Michael Delicious Dolan. What's up, fella? Mm-hmm. What's going on, buddy? How was your weekend? Uh, it was amazing. I got to see you, so that was the only shitty part of it. But uh, yeah, man, good weekend. Did a little shopping, watched the nice. UFC fight. It was amazing. Nice. What about you, my man? Well, uh, other than seeing you, I, I did absolutely nothing, and then I just went home and sulked after the fight, you know, because I really wasn't too happy with, uh, you know, the way the main event turned out. But other than that, I guess it, it was a pretty good night, you know. Yeah, man. A lot, a lot of laughs were had, a lot of jokes. It was amazing. We were, we were laughing, we were having a great time, and then all of a sudden the record skipped. It was like somebody uh, somebody bumped the, ta- the DJ table at a party in the ghetto because there was a lot yeah. of dead faces. Like, we just learned that Santa Claus wasn't real. And I, was, I, was not, I was not too happy, dude. I was ready to storm out of that house like a child and go sit in the car and just wait for my bee friends so I could go home. I was so pissed off. But, you know what you should have done, man? You, you should have trashed that place. That place was a shithole where we were. I know. That's what I was thinking. I should have just fucking, because right next to us, I believe we were sitting right next to the laundry room. I should have just went in there and just started pulling pipes off the walls just to fucking show exactly how pissed off I was. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you know, Franco is joining us. Franco? Franco? Bueller? Franco? Nah. Bueller? Nah. Bueller? Hey, God, he's not here. I hate that asshole. Bueller? Shocking that he wouldn't be Bueller? Shocking. Oh, shut up already, Ben Stein. You know, he's been absent nine times. <laughs> nine times, people. The kid's, the kid's a Don Diva, man. It's unbelievable. I mean, I, we can't do anything about it, though, because we don't beat him. He doesn't have to show up half the time. I, I, I guess it's like in college, when you get to a certain level, the teacher basically on the first day after the syllabus says... All right, here's all the shit you got to do if you want an A, a B, a C, a D. Obviously, I looked from the C down. And then uh, I would sit there and they'd say, you know what? The classes are these days. If you're smart enough to show up for the midterm and the final, God bless you. If you fail it, too bad. Franco clearly has proven he can show up for the midterm and final and throw job kids like me and you who are writing so many notes there's smoke coming from the, the fucking piece of paper like terrible test of Verde and saved by, by the bell, man. Oh, God, I, I just can't fucking believe it. The night started off good, dude. You know, of course, we got that sweet uh, Pettis, knock, Pettis knockout. But, uh, 
it was all downhill from there, you know. It just fucking wasn't our night whatsoever. And, uh, you know, this is probably a sign of things to come yet again. Yeah, man. It was. I, w- I would like to think that uh, that it's not going to be, but it's it's like at this point, like if you're a Met fan, you can say you're tied for first <laughs> in the NL East, and this is going to be the high point of your season. This this is it, top of the mountain. If if you're a Jet fan, it's like you're in midseason form. Everybody's 0-0. Unfortunately, immediately after that, uh, well, you know, you and I had our cocks out, man, because out the gate, we both picked Pettis KO, and Frank had Joe J. Lowell on, so we were sitting here having a great time, uh, you know, twirling our dicks around, and unfortunately, it went downhill from there. Yeah, I believe we were just like, that stupid son of a bitch, we're going to fucking rape his face this time, and the next thing you know, the next fight happened, and we were like, all right, it's just one, it's just one. You know, it's okay. It's okay. Then, there's, there's a lot more. Okay, I don't we know if we know. There's, there's seven. There's yeah. seven tonight. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and next thing you know, I mean, I believe uh, you said he sent you the point totals. Uh, I'm sure the yeah. listeners out there are riveted on the edge of their seat wanting to know exactly how bad it is after one event so far. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be worse, I guess. I could be you. Um, oh. the, the way. Oh. The way oh. it started, uh, I, I think we're going to just go from uh, the one fight. From now on, we're just going to pick the one fight that works for mine in your favor. So I think the fantasy totals are now 10 for me, 7 for nice. you, and nice. none for Nick. So, Frank, I'll put up a I, I like that. Just, just like his attendance, you know? Exactly, um, you know. But then I have to come down he to reality. And he, gets <laughs> you know, he gets no points. No whims, no whims. Oh, sorry, Nichols. I mean, they give 600 on the SAT for spelling your name right, and apparently Franco didn't even do that. So I'm borderline embarrassed for the kid. That's it. I could have gotten 600 free points? Absolutely, man. Even if that were the case, though, I think this kid could spot us quite a bit, and for some reason he's just got he's got a hold on us, man. He's he's in our heads. <sighs> he's probably just better at it than us. And, you know, every once in a while he just gets – I mean, he he gets a lucky fight, like we can talk about in a little bit, like – you and I, again, thought we had it in the bag with <laughs> Okami and Bosch. Nick Frank got laughed out of here last uh, week when he picked that meat uh, sack, and it, it was just got robbed from us, just absolutely ripped away. But uh, we'll obviously get more granular in a few seconds, and, you know, this, this show is sponsored by Kleenex and diapers because that's all you and I need. This <laughs> is nothing but sour grapes. <laughs> I, I, I think uh, the key ingredient is a little bit of shoulda, some coulda, and a whole lot of woulda. And what is that any of the ingredients for? Uh, it's, that sounds like ingredients for cry soup, which a I know I'm a huge fan of. Huge of cry soup, my man. Oh. Sometimes you got to mix the recipe and add and, sub- and, and subtract, depending upon the serving you're looking for. And we got served a facial. Mm. Mm. And normally I'd be okay with that, but now when it's from Nick Frank, you know what I'm saying? Blah. Yeah, I mean, normally I'll pay double for that kind of action, but when it's free, <laughs> it just doesn't feel as right, you know? No. I feel violated when Nick does it, but yeah, exactly. When you're playing a fitty spot for it, it's different. Yeah, it's it's really different. I hate too that I got to sit here and and put this kid's points up here like an asshole. I, he knows what he's doing, man. He got home from the Dominican today. Um, I, I don't even think he went to be honest. He's been sitting in Port Monmouth with <laughs> holding his junk. I don't even think he has a real job. He's always claiming, oh, I got to work and stuff. I don't, I don't think any of it's real, man. I think the kid's in the laboratory putting his beats together and, and basically sitting there just dissecting all these fights. It's the only thing that, one, could be the case, and two, can help make, make me sleep at night. So I, I just I, I think that's got to be it. I think that's the story we're going to go with, my man. You, you can't blame him, Dolo. You know, you know, why should he do anything else when we are the highest-paid show on the Internet? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, that's how much we've taken the world by storm that we just garner such high paychecks from this podcast world that there's no reason to go to work i mean you just go to work as a hobby for i i do i I, why you know what i do it to be selfless because i want people to enjoy what they do for a living and i don't see with me not being there how that's possible um you know i actually write it off on my taxes because it's it's really (laughs) just it's charity is is what it is of course uh, my only concern so is, uh, I know taxes is a hot button, you know, issue right now in the world that we're all really into, which is politics. I'm just hoping that the, the IRS doesn't audit our books because the amount of no, money yeah. that we're making for this show. I mean, basically, I'm living off the interest alone, 
and I'm trying to blow this money, dude. And it's you know what it's like? It's like Brewster's Millions, dude. I'm out there trying yeah. to throw money around like like Same fucking here. Ben Seaver when when Grandma and Grandpa gave him the money, and it just keeps coming back tenfold, dude. I've got Swiss bank accounts. I'm on Amazon.com all day. And you know what? I just can't get rid of this stuff. So it's only a matter of time <laughs> before it all catches up with me. That's it, man. Fire sale. Um, <laughs> but it, it, the way it breaks down after one event, Dubber goes three for five with 17 points. Uh, that's not so good. No sound effects. I, I was expecting a... Whoa. No! I was a little, I was no! Slow. I was no! Slow. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am in second for probably the one and only time this uh, this competition because I am the king of coming out the gate decent. Uh, last time, I think the third event, I had actually taken the lead by a fraction of a point, which you know basically had me uh, printing out banners and, and putting my face up all over the front yard of my property, <laughs> and like I was playing uh, high school football in Texas. But uh, unfortunately, I'm sure it won't last. It's not sustainable. So. Uh, I am in second place. I went three for five, and I had 22 nice. points. We'll break down oh. how you and I had the same amount of victories, but my <laughs> overall girth and manliness yeah. gave me the extra uh, extra points over you. So we will get into <laughs> to that. And I think that's it, right? I mean, there's only two people on the show, so I yeah. can't imagine there was two a third people person here. Yeah, who picked fights. I, I just don't So remember. you're in the lead. Yeah. Franco gets there. Franco, actually, so why don't you rephrase that and say, you're in first, I'm in second, Franco's in third with a fucking big fat goose egg. Yeah, that sounds right. That sounds right. Unfortunately, like that. it's back to reality, and, and that cock smoke is in first place. He went four for seven, and he, um, he, he wound up, uh, I think, finishing with 26 points. And, and you know, as we discussed, he, he stole that fight. Uh, against Okami uh, with, with Tim Bosch. And the thing that sucks, too, is... <laughs> exactly. I couldn't have put it better myself. But unfortunately, we're going to have to go through this all over again with this kid next week. I know. Like, he's going to be gloating. He's going to be laughing at us. The fights we pick tonight don't even count, which means you and I will go perfect on both cards. <laughs> I have no doubt well, about that. Well, why can't they count? And then fucking Franco can check in during the week. You know, and, uh, you know, we, we can accept his picks. But, because uh, there's two events, dude. There's two events. We can really gain on it. I know. Well, I, I think and he can get even half credit. The... All right. We can give him fractionals. I think that's fair. Okay. Franco gets fractional one. shares, and, and we get whole shares. So I, I think I think somehow he'll still wound up with a, a whole number, and, you know, yeah. I'll have fractionals. It's just the way that things work, you know. <laughs> Uh, more than likely, the way that this shit seems to be going. So you know, what can you do? I mean, I, I would, I'm I'm pissed, but I, I I would be more pissed if I were you because if if memory serves me, I believe you sold your soul quite a, a while ago, my man. And I'm looking to see. I don't know if there was a contract, a notary, or or what. But I mean, what did you get in return, dude? Because you sold your soul, well, and it just doesn't seem to pay any kind of dividend. Well, you see, unfortunately, when I sold my soul, I was during my partying days, and all I sold my soul for was to be impervious and to be able to party constantly, you see. So I really got nothing in into it except to stay alive. And so now I just sit here, and I get nothing in return, and I'm miserable for the rest of my days. So I was it, just say, it did sucks. work, though. You've proven to be impervious, dude. I don't know if it's possible to kill you. I've been shocked back to life. So, you know, you know, I went to sleep for a little while, woke up, you know, and and – so I guess the, the the contract has been made good on. So I don't even know if I really have that contract anymore. I certainly ain't getting any sort of love or or any sort of riches out of the fucking deal. So overall, I'm an idiot, and I and I sold it for the wrong things. That's awesome. I think I've mentioned this on the show before, but I don't give a shit if I, I say it again because you know I know we have diehard listeners. Um, a buddy of mine, when we were in third grade, you know, we used to have you know pizza day. It was a big deal once a year. Uh, you know, we'd be able to order X amount of slices from Domino's and the class mothers would bring it in and we would all go nuts and it, it would be amazing. Um, and my buddy had gotten two slices, which was standard, you know, that's what most people yeah. were getting. And that's about right. Um, he decided, actually, you know what, I'm sorry, it was fifth grade. He, uh, he, he decided that he would sell his soul to one of our classmates for his piece of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody understood why. Like he honestly was like, "Oh, come on, let me get the piece of pizza." And the kid was like, "What? What do you have for me?" 
And this kid was weird. I mean, there's no there's no two ways about it. A fifth grader who gets offered someone's soul and, and actually goes forward with questions from there shows me this is someone who's thought about this. Um, <laughs> he, he, had, he had transferred in. He was very, you know, he's very, uh, I don't want to judge anybody, but he was uh, very much a loner. He was a little bit heavy set, and that's where we should have known something was up. This kid was yeah. honestly like 225 in fifth grade, and he's offering up <laughs> slices of pizza. That just doesn't sound right. That just doesn't wow. add up to me. I said, why is this kid offering pieces of pizza to my man here? And he put out the what was on the line. He said, well, sell me your soul. So my buddy's like, yeah, sure, fuck it. You got my soul, no doubt. And that was not it. He said, no, 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 that's not how this works. He said, you're going to need to write it down on a piece of paper. You're going to write your name down and then put, you know, Matt such and such is soul. On a piece of paper, so obviously he doesn't think twice about it. He basically sells his soul. He eats the piece of pizza. No doubt it was amazing and well worth it. He doesn't think anything of it, right? We go through the rest of our days growing up, you know, uh, finding our D's and, and chasing uh, flat-chested little girlies. And, and, you know, we get older and, and, and things go on. And then we wind up being in Red Bank uh, when we were about 15 at uh, the fireworks. And we run into this creep. Let me tell you something. I'm going to ruin it for you. I'm going to ruin other bookends. He was in a trench coat. He was about Get out of here. 275. He was in a trench coat. It was more like a trench tarp. But he's there, and we're like, hey, what's up, buddy? And, you know, he's bullshitting, and he's just standing there very stoic. And my buddy happens to be there, and he's like, hey, Matt, I still have your soul. And he's just like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? He's like, remember you sold your soul? He's just like, I, I guess, I kind of vaguely remember. He's like, what do you mean you have my soul? He's like, well, it's in a lockbox. <laughs> Pulp fiction shit. He had put it in a lockbox. What fifth grader has a lockbox, first of all? And what fifth grader has the diligence to hold onto a piece of paper that is entitled someone's soul? I don't know. No. Well, I think my friend made somebody, out in the deal, to be perfectly honest. You know, he's only got three obviously. DUIs. He's only been popped for other things two or three times. Um, you I know. was going to say, you said he's yeah. got a loving girlfriend. If it's the same guy we were talking about Saturday night, so we're all good here. Uh, you know what? He got a few lucky punches in, but I still feel I won the fight. So, um, <laughs> I don't know, but, yeah, it, it is what it is. But well, let's, let's dive into this thing. Uh, I think uh. it begins and ends in one place. I'll let you tee it up, dude, and just pretty much just go ape shit, and I'll obviously go yeah. from there. I can't imagine where we should start. Well, of course, we're going to start at the top, but I'm sure both of us are going to have a lot to say about this. And, uh, you know, obviously, we, uh, UFC 144 took place in uh, uh, Tokyo, Japan at the Saitama Super Arena. And uh, the main event pitted Frankie Edgar versus Benson Smooth Henderson. Now, of course, we're homers and dirty jersey boys. So, of course, we're going to be a little bit biased. But we did watch the fight, and... I can't help but feel that Frankie Edgar won this fight, and won this fight, I, I feel pretty handily, okay? In, in my opinion, dude, um, and I'm sh I don't know, I'm not going to put words in your mouth until you have a chance to speak, but I'm pretty sure that Frankie Edgar definitely landed more strikes in that match, and, uh, you know, he got, a, I think, about five takedowns total. And um, also, after the fight, the original CompuStrike numbers, which I'm going to say I want them to stop using fucking CompuStrike numbers right now, because right after the fucking match, uh, I believe there it was something like 118 to uh, 105 uh, in favor of Frankie Edgar. Then out of nowhere during the course of the fucking night into the next day, it changed to, to reflect that Benson Henderson somehow scored more strikes. And then if you look on UFC's fucking website, um, it had something ridiculously low, like 80 to 65 in, in favor of Benson Henderson, which I don't know where they came up with these numbers. Um, uh, basically, uh, to make a long story short about what, what I'm trying to say is I feel Frank Yeager definitely won that fight. Benson Henderson landed a few more heavier shots. You know, he landed one sweet up kick um, that, that definitely dazed Edgar at the end of round two. And um, I believe in uh, towards the middle of round four. No, I guess it was round five that he tagged uh, uh, Frankie, and, and he ended up on top. But before that happened, Edgar was definitely winning that round soundly. Now, um, I've complained about judging in the past. I believe we all have. But I think these judges really need to go back to school and start learning some MMA. I know most of them come from a boxing background. And uh, they're not really qualified to be sitting here looking at MMA fights and breaking down stats. And obviously they, they can't figure out what the hell they're looking at because I really don't see that Benson won that fight. Now, was it a close? You could argue it was a close fight, I guess. 
I don't think it was that close, but I guess if you're gonna if people want to start counting damage as a reason for somebody winning a fight, which I, has never been on the books for boxing, never been on the books for MMA, because you know what? If you break it down, somebody's gonna be stronger than the other guy, no matter if they're the same size or not, and somebody's gonna be able to punch harder. So I don't see how people like to take to effect and go, well, look at Frankie's face after the fight. I, I just don't fucking get it, dude. And I know I'm starting to ramble and talk in circles, so I'm gonna throw it over to you because I'm just frustrated with this horseshit that keeps seems to keep happening, and a lot more frequently lately. Uh, I, 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 I agree. I think we're going to have to take you to Lamaze, though, my man. you got to get your breathing yeah. down. you got to get Sorry. to a happy place. You, you need uh, to really, you I know, just help. get centered, dude. you gotta, you got to maybe do a little yoga, a little Tai Chi, something like okay. that. But okay. I, I do agree with your sentiment. Um, you know, I, I was pretty blown away by the decision. I, I, I think... I mean, I, I thought it was four to one, Frankie, you know, after so you know the fight. But I I understood where I could see it was maybe three two, Frankie, going into the the fifth round. We were sitting there, we were all geeked up. You know, outside of the up kick, we didn't feel like Benson Henderson really did anything to Frankie um, that that really added up. But I I just felt like it was a combination of things. Yeah, Frankie's face looked really bad. There's no two ways yeah. about it. I think there's a combination of things. One, Frankie's a bruiser. I mean, he, he's done it in every fight. Every fight, his nose starts bleeding like a sieve. His eyes swell up. I mean, we used to have that with Forrest, too, right, when, before he Absolutely. had the surgery with all the scar tissue. And to where, yeah, that should have somewhat of an impact, but I don't think it should carry a ton of weight because that's a byproduct of Frankie being smaller than, than Benson Henderson. And obviously we're going to get into later, oh, uh, should Frankie drop to 145, that dick smoke Joe Rogan's the first thing he asks Frankie, like the guy hasn't been the fucking champion for four years. Yeah. And, you know, the guy hasn't defended his title a couple times. And, you know, that's the first thing he asks. Because we all know Joe Rogan. Once he gets on somebody, that's it. It's, it's completely over, and you're not going to hear anything else. But uh, I think that should carry some weight. There's no two ways about it. But – that shouldn't be the decisive factor, you know, in a fight. I don't think that's how it should break down. The other thing that pissed me off, and I know it factored in, was that fucking clown Henderson was dancing around at the end of the fourth, going into the fifth round and trying to hype everybody up. To me, that's an act of desperation. That's someone yeah. who's trying to sell that they're fine, their cardio's fine, they're, they're all hyped up. I, I just don't understand where that's a positive. And, and if that's something that factored in, then... You know, I, I think that, you know, it's, it's bullshit. And we can get to the judges all day. I think you're right to where most of them are, you know, skilled in the discipline of boxing. I think we all hoped that being over in Japan, where, you know, MMA has been for a long time and, and they, they certainly uh, respect the sport, that maybe we were going to get some guys that, you know, really knew what they were looking for and, and weren't just looking at, you know, basically right hands. And that's it. Right. Because I, I wasn't aware of all the back and forth with, with the compu strike numbers and, and the disparity amongst them. Because, you know, what I saw, and I, it kind of it didn't sway me, but I, was, I, I still didn't think, you know, Henderson won the fight. But, I mean, when you look at the numbers that CBS Sportsline has up, they have a, the strikes total is 100 to 81 Henderson. The significant Ridiculous. strikes is 87 to 68 Henderson. I just don't – I mean, you give me a Frankie Edgar fight where he throws 81 strikes? He Never. throws 81 strikes in two to three rounds. Exactly, I don't understand how dude. that number comes up. And, and Frankie didn't look like Frankie with his angles that he normally is, but he was in and out, and he was catching the kicks of Henderson. And granted, that should, that should carry some weight, right? Because, you know, yep. Henderson – but, I mean, on both sides, right? Henderson, in order to catch a kick, you have to land a kick, Right. So I, I understand right. that, but he was consistently showing that ability to basically take a kick, and Frankie's side was not red. It was not bruised. We've already cleared that he's a bruiser, so if they were that much of impactful strikes, especially with a guy with legs like Benson Henderson, who looks like he's an NFL running back with his legs, I, I just don't understand where that you know has to basically nullify and, and negate that. And Frankie was 5 for 12 on takedown attempts, right? Yes. And Henderson was one for one. I was disappointed that the last takedown that Frankie got at the end of the fifth wasn't emphatic, you know. Um, I was hoping, you know, I thought if he's got a nice little slam, it might have actually carried a little bit more weight. But first round I thought was all Frankie. I, Absolutely. I thought, the, I thought the second round was all Frankie until the up kick. I mean, the only reason right. you, you can throw an up kick is because you're on your back. 
So I, I don't understand mm-hmm. how that doesn't carry any weight. I thought the Preach. third round. I thought the third round was Frankie, and I thought the fourth was probably Frankie as well. But I was like, okay, yeah. let me be real. Maybe it's two two going into the fifth. That's what I was saying to myself. I said maybe I'm being a homer. Frankie does look a little beat up, but I don't think that should carry all the weight. And then when we got to the end of that fight, dude. Well, actually, you know what? I'm getting I'm getting all excited like you were. Let me back up. The fourth <laughs> round is okay, what really okay, pissed okay. me off, right? Mm-hmm. He, basically, Frankie catches a light kick for the fifteenth time. He takes Henderson down, and right when he takes him down, Henderson basically goes for his bread and butter. You could see him let go a little bit, and he went for the guillotine, right? So right. he's in a deep guillotine. I mean, that looked bad. Frankie looked yeah. like he was really in deep. He's got a guy who's bigger, longer limbs. He had the body lock. He had leverage for days. So Frankie should get points for the takedown, and then Henderson goes for the submission. Okay, right, right there. That's, that evens each other out, right? That's 1-1 one, one right. as far Gosh. as some kind of action. And then Frankie gets a submission de- defense and winds up in the guard or half guard of Benson Henderson. And you yeah. know they gave Henderson the points for going and getting a, you know, a submission attempt. And it just like, it completely nullified everything else that went on in the fight. But I, I was just so floored at the end because – you could see it, right? Normally when it's a split decision, obviously they give the points, they say one of their names, and then they go to the next point. So once they right. went right and just started listing out the points, <clears throat> you even saw it. Benson Henderson was standing there nodding, like, yep, yeah, I lost. You know what I mean? Like, he got me. You never see yeah. a guy nodding like that, no, saying, yeah, I got it. He would already have his arms up and be going nuts. Same yeah. thing with him trying dancing. to hype the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. He would be trying to sell it. He was trying to sell it at the end of the fourth, and he was basically nodding like, you know what, I didn't, I didn't get it. It was all right. And when it went to Henderson, I mean, even if you're going to tell me that it wasn't 4-1 Frankie and it was 3-2 Benson Henderson, which I don't believe, I think it was 3-2 Frankie at worst. Absolutely. But if you're going to tell at me 3-2 worst. Henderson, you're going to tell me he did enough to take the belt from the champion? There's no way. And the one There's judge- that one judge had it 4-1 fucking uh, Henderson. Well, if you look at the copy strike dubs, at the bottom, right, they break everything down. They basically, between taking the strikes, where Henderson outstruck Frankie, according to them, by 19. And again, give me a fight not only with Frankie. Give me a fight that Benson Henderson in five rounds throws 100 strikes. It doesn't happen, mm-hmm. dude. They're throwing probably no. like a buck twenty-five, buck fifty in a five-round fight with the speed. That fight never stopped. There was never a dull moment no. in that fight. You're going to tell me all they did, even if they were throwing little p-boy, you know, leg kicks that were getting checked, they were going to be easily get to 120, you know, 125. So, you know, but at the bottom, then it breaks it down and it says rating system from performance. Benson Henderson rating 52. Frankie Edgar 41. Henderson points, 388 to Edgar, 285.10 point loss, 4946 Benson Henderson. So I just don't know if it's, these guys are looking at the damage that was done, and again, it should factor in. I don't know if they're looking at that, or are they just so clueless in MMA, and, you know, it could go one of two ways, right? I'm so clueless in MMA, and I'm just going to give it to the guy who I think won the fight, not based off of anything else, or... I know that I'm actually not good with MMA. I have no fucking clue what I'm talking about. So let me purely go by the computer. I'm only going to go by what the computer says, and I, I might as well just not watch the fight. I might as well just watch it like I'm watching, you know, a simulcast basketball game on the Internet and not see any of the live action. People. That's it. And you were Please joking about that. that. You were joking about Cecil Peace, Peoples, and we were like, all right, with the decision, Frankie's got this. We don't have Peoples to deal with. And sure as shit, it goes down yeah. where Henderson is the new champion in a UD in a fight that they claim he basically just destroyed Frankie. Like, Frankie's not in his class. Yeah. It, it I was blown away, me. dude. I was pissed and blown yeah. away. I was totally blown away, too, dude. And, you know, uh, I, I didn't even see the, the takedown stats other than the fact that Frankie was successful on five, which you said that it, it claims that, that Hen, uh, <clears throat> Henderson was uh, one for one. successful one for one, which is bullshit. Frankie stuffed him at least two or three times before that. So this is the, so even the fucking CompuStat bullshit 
is just completely fucked up, you know. And, and I used to joke about it because Strike Force was was using it all all that time. And the the, the in those fights, the, the the strikes were so astronomical. They had guys fucking throwing four hundred punches in a fight. So the thing is not accurate. So you right. know, then everybody goes, "Well, look at the damage on his face." Henderson outstruck him, and then I'm sitting there doing something I haven't done in years. I'm I'm I'm, I'm sitting there on like fucking blogs and shit like that, getting furious, the, 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 talking to these knuckle draggers that have no idea what they watched, or they didn't even watch the fucking fight. They just looked at the stats and, they were and, and Twitter, pictures probably. of the dudes. Yeah, exactly, you know, and they just see that Frankie's face is worse. Well, guess what? Frankie looked like he had been in a war against Gray Maynard when he knocked him out, and Gray Maynard looked fine at the press conference. But guess what? Frankie still knocked Gray out and won the fight. Damage does not necessarily mean that a guy cannot win a fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I hate it when it gets brought up that maybe it should, you know, every once in a while you hear them talk about, well, maybe it should start to go down for the judges to be able to rate damage along with, with it. I, I don't think that's fucking necessary at all. It's never been a part of the game. Because, yeah, and it's that's so oh, open to interpretation. Dude, that's so look, discretionary. You can't do yeah. that, you know what I mean? Because anybody can say, well, I rate damage on this, and I do, you know what I mean? You, can, you can't do yeah. it. No. Never, you know, the, the, Frankie's a bleeder. And look at the damage that Tim Boach took. You know what I'm saying? Okami wasn't cut at the end of that fight, and what did he do? He came back and won. So, you know, damage means horseshit. If and, you're gonna, uh, you know... Yeah. No, you're right. But if, you're, it, you're, if you're going to tell me that Ben Henderson won that fight four rounds to one, then Gray Maynard won five rounds to none against Frankie in that yeah. fight that went to a draw. Because Gray Maynard Absolutely. beat the shit out of Frankie and almost put him out three mm-hmm. times in the first and another time in the third. Henderson, exactly. you know, outside of an up kick... That staggered Frankie a little bit more, just cut the bridge of his nose, wins four rounds to one. Then Gray Maynard should have been the champ two years ago. Yeah, I, I just don't get it, dude. You know, uh, uh, to do a little small little butcher block because we're running out of some time here. We need to put the fucking judges up on the butcher block. They need proper education. They need to know what they're looking at. And you know what? They need new blood, which isn't going to happen because they all have these contracts that don't run out until they're ready to retire. It's fucking ridiculous. It's you know, they, and, and you can't. Gig. It's an amazing gig. I wish I, I was smart and, and somehow got involved in it and became a judge somewhere because apparently you, you work for the rest of your life. You get flown to places like Japan who have plenty of great judges who they could have pulled in to judge uh, uh, that night, and they didn't. They pulled judges from America who apparently, you know, unless you get the cream of the crop, this is what you got to worry about. Like, fuck it, the bad decisions across the board because I and don't we, see what title even, fight those people are watching. And we don't even know who the cream of the crop is because we only know the names like Cecil Peoples who suck. Right. Exactly. You know? well, so I don't, I don't get it. There's a few guys, you know, that have been taking courses that, that were fighters, and of course I, I didn't write their names down, so I can't tell you. But they're, they're low guys on the totem pole still. Even though they have more knowledge than all these guys, it's not like they're going to be awarded these bigger fights. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I guess it, so it's it, at it, the discretion of the governing body. But I don't know how they, they bring these judges in from outside because it has nothing to do with them. It should be, the, you know, just like it's an independent government body between California and Vegas, it should be the same over there. And I didn't see any names like, you know, Hiroshi Saki. I was seeing a lot of Smiths and whatnot on the panel, and I don't think they're native to Japan. No, I don't. Well, excuse me, I almost vomited there. No, exactly, dude. It just doesn't make any sense. But we got a caller on the line, so we're going to pop over there and see what this song bitch got to say. What's up, man? You're on Cauliflower for the years. What's up, boys? Oh, what's up? Wasabi. Man, I just wanted to, you know, comment more on what you were saying about the refs and shit. I mean, you know, Dana always says, you know, don't leave it in the hands of the refs. You know, don't leave it in the hands of the refs. But, you know, not every fight ends in a knockout or a sub or a TKO. So, I mean, the refs are an important part of this. So how are they not getting the training that they need? To be able to figure they out how, how to, I know, but I know, but how do you not? How are they not being forced? If, if they're getting, if they're going to be, you know, if you need to go for all these licenses and stuff to get it, then they should be held accountable too, because, you know, it, you know, I've only been following this really for like you know five years or so, and from what I know then to what I know now, you know, I don't know everything about the sport, but I know I know more now than I did then. So I've learned as I've been watching the sport. It seems that these refs haven't learned. They they don't they don't know anything. Like you said, they go they just judging based on on damage. And yeah, Frankie looked like shit after that fight. You know, and Henderson had like no marks on him at all, pretty much. So I don't know how they could you know how they could still be able to you know judge these uh, these MMA fights and and not you know receive the training that they should have. 
You're 100% well, well, right, Steve. I just don't understand at this level how that can be, be acceptable. I mean, name any major profession in the world, and if there are certain licensing exams that go with it, you've got to have them to do certain parts or certain job functions, right? And this isn't a fight at a local gym. This is on the highest level, and the fact that these guys don't have to be actively educated and things like that, then they might as well have us judge the fight. Because we yeah. can do it just as well, if not, you know, a little better or a little worse. But when it's coming down to guys' livelihoods and legacies, the fact that there are actual courses that can be taken and it's not a mandated thing, it's a joke. I don't understand. So basically it's just a good old boy club. It's like a fucking union. Mm -hmm. It's basically like, all right, exactly. who, you know, who are you boys with? You're going to have a job for life. You're going to do nothing, and you're going to have a pension. That's why all these companies fucking died two years ago. That's why Ford went under, because they're carrying all these pensions and shit and all these sweetheart deals of people that haven't worked in 30 years. It's the same template. It's the same, it's the same concept. So when you start fucking with people's careers on it, it's just lazy to not have to do it. And you should want to do it. You have the greatest, one of the greatest jobs in the world, dude. Like Dub said, you're getting flown around. You've got a front row seat for an amazing fight. You don't have to deal with any of the bullshit or pay for it. That's, that's a dream. And you don't respect it enough to go take these courses and master your craft. I don't understand it. You can get some guy off the street who doesn't know shit. Look at that fight. He'd say Frankie Edgar got killed. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. And that's the fucked up thing, too, though. I mean, it's a cushy job. These guys aren't in there taking the hits. They're there to judge the dudes who are putting their fucking bodies on the line, like you said, Michael, their legacy on the line. And a guy like Frankie, who is a warrior and takes the tons of punishment that the dude takes, he is mostly a point fighter, which means it's going to go to the distance, yeah. I would say, about 80% of the time with Frankie. So he's putting in a lot of time and a lot of rounds. And you know what? Frankie might not have the career longevity that a lot of guys do, so to be, in my opinion, robbed of a victory that I felt he had is, is out of control. And, and these guys are not forced to have any further education or anything. They get the job, and that's it. They're, they're, they're set for life. And, you know, as much as people want to change it, it it's never going to change because, like, also, like you said, it's like a good old boys club. But, you know, what can you do? Well, Steve, well, buddy, we, thanks for... We, yeah, thanks, Steve. I'm going to let, I'm gonna let you know, real quick, hold on too, All right. I was saying, that, that's a, I would be surprised if Dana doesn't make more noise about this, because this is two pay-per-views in a row now that the judges, you know, it's been close fights that the judges, you know, depending on who you talk to, have fucked the fight. You know, he might lose, you know, he might lose viewers because they're just going to be like, ah, fuck this, you know. Yeah, so I wonder if he'll make more of a stink about it, you know, <sighs> yeah. going forward, it's but... It's tough to say. And like you said, Steve, that's, but, you know, Dana White says, all right, all right, it always has to go finish the fights. Don't leave it in the hands of the judges. And like Dub said, that isn't what Frankie does. It isn't who he is. He knocked Gray Maynard out, and that may have been his first knockout victory, but he's just not a finisher. And Dana White came out and said that Frankie Edgar won that fight. So for Dana always yeah. to tell people, I don't want to hear it, I don't want to hear you're crying, leave, don't leave it in the hands of the judges, that's what can happen. So for him to come out and say, Frankie won that fight, I mean, what, this is not a guy who swallows his words very easily. He's a pretty, you know, opinionated guy. And he is not somebody who's going to take it in the face very often. And for him to go against everything he says kind of shows what he really felt and what he really thought. Absolutely. Steve, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go though, all right, brother? Because uh, we're gonna right, try man. to start moving it along. We've been crying about this for a while now, right, bro? <laughs> Later, boys. All right, talk, thanks, bud. Talk to talk to you Wednesday, buddy. Push. All right, let me hang up. Hold on a second. Hang up. There we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> whoops, I hit the wrong button. Um, yeah, but I don't know, dude. Yeah, and here's the other thing too. You know, now <sighs> I've said it before. I'm a huge fan of Joe Rogan, but he's starting to get on my fucking nerves, okay, with the way when he it, it, he just rides one dude's jock through the fight. And you know what? Maybe they're sitting the judges a little too close to Joe Rogan, okay, and they're just going, all right, Joe knows what he's, what he's talking about. Let's just copy off what the hell he's announcing because through that whole fight, he was making it seem like Henderson had a legitimate shot to win the fight. You know, yeah. like he was sucking his nuts like crazy, and Goldie kept correcting him, and he and he always over talks Goldie, even when Goldie yeah. has a good point. There are some times when Goldie says things crazy, like Gray Maynard walks around at 200 pounds before he cuts weight to 155, and then Joe Rogan's like, you're an idiot, you know, and I can understand that. Joe's got a point then. But yeah. Goldie kept saying, no, I think Frankie's got this. I think Frankie's been landing the, the better strikes, more strikes. He's got the takedowns. And Joe was just, yeah, but look at the damage. Oh, you know, Henderson's just so much bigger, so much stronger. All that kind of shit. And, and what, does that, what does that say? And that's why these fucking idiots are, are like, well, look at, look, at, look, at, look at the guy's face. You can see who won that fight. That's, not, that's got nothing to do with nothing. It's fucking horse shit.
No, I know. And you're right, because we had been speaking about that on Saturday night. And if you want these judges not to hear Rogan, you, you need to put them in a different state, because anything that happens to the guy that he likes, you, you, would basically, you would think that the president got sniped, like we were in Dallas, Texas, and Kennedy just took a bullet yeah. to the head. The guy gets kicked in the face, and he's like, oh, look at him take that kick. Like, he just goes ape shit all the time. And it's just so one-sided. And Joe knows what he's talking about. There's no two ways about it. But he absolutely gets his mind fixed on somebody and just goes nuts. And it's happened more and more in the last, like, two years. It's become where I don't like listening to Rogan anymore. Like, I, do, I don't Same like here, listening dude. to the fights because it's about aggression, right? He's just more aggressive yeah. than Goldie, and he's louder. So, like you said, he over-talks Goldie, and he just shoots down anything that Goldie says. And Goldie is, you know, he's got some buffoon moments. But he always makes <laughs> valid points, you know? And, and Rogan <laughs> goes does. nuts, and I, I just I can't stand it. And, you know, that's what we always hate about boxing. And with the homers, with the commentators, then eventually it leads to the judges, right? If somebody's fighting in their home state and it goes to the cards in boxing, you better believe you know who's winning that fight. Or whoever's with Don King is winning that fight. And I'm not saying that's Absolutely. where MMA is going to go, but that's the slippery slope you need to be careful with. And if I'm going to pay 60 bucks to watch a fight, dude, I'm looking for two guys. You can, you can like somebody one way or another, but I'm not looking to sit with, you know, the fucking mother of Benson Henderson for the fight. I don't need no. him stroking Henderson the whole fight. I wanted to mute it. It was just so annoying because he it does it so like fun. if there are five fights on a card dude he does it at least two to three fights absolutely and this this night it was it was out of control and and like i said i guess we'll get moving because we're already uh, i think uh 40 minutes into the show but uh like the next fight with rampage jackson and ryan bader i mean he was i i feel like he was trying to make up for you know the comments that he made about rampage but rampage yeah. calling him out on the carpet and stuff because even though rampage was fat and slow and don't get me wrong, he had his moments because he showed how strong he was against Bader. Uh, you know, this was another fight that kind of Rogan was leaning towards Rampage when it was obvious that Bader was doing everything he needed to do to win the fight. Yeah, and really, like you said, Rogan was just trying to, you know, make things kosher with Rampage because they had gotten into a little bit of a war of words, and uh, Rampage had called him out and, and, you know, said he's never been in there fighting and, and stuff like that. But, yeah, I mean, he definitely seemed to do it in that fight. I, I was disappointed in Rampage. I picked Bader. I, I thought Bader was going to win the fight. Bader so did, did the exact game plan that we all thought he was going to do, and for him to win the fight, the, I mean, I understand Rampage might have had an injury or what, but I mean, he what was he the day of the weigh-in, Dubs? He wasn't he like he was like two twenty-six or something. No, he was two eleven. He had two, dropped oh, twenty six pounds. No, no, I mean before morning. that. I thought you said the morning of the the weight cut. Oh, the morning. The two thirty-two. He, he was two thirty-two. Yeah, how do you think that's going to go, whether it's an injury or not? Like, dude, you need to just sit in the – it doesn't take, you know, uh, an injury to sit in a sauna, right? You can sit in a sauna and soak it out for days Absolutely. beforehand. So, And he was in Japan for a while because, as they had alluded to on the broadcast, Rampage has some children in Japan. <laughs> Similar to how just Sean Kemp has like. some children in Portland. As well as 42 <laughs> other states. Like, that was, that was hysterical. Uh, like, you know, Rampage loves Japan. He's got some kids here. It's like, really? I didn't know that you had to basically <laughs> chop it up amongst continents and start listing where motherfuckers have kids. Like, they're setting up franchises. Like, they're McDonald's. <laughs> you gotta love Rampage, man. He loves the Japanese girls, obviously. That's why he wow. went early. And that's why I guess he was too busy to be cutting that weight. You know, at the weigh-ins, he came out in the, sw in the uh, what do you call it, gear, to, to keep dropping the weight. And it just yeah, the sweat it wasn't enough. He, 211. You know, he had to take off all the, uh, the sweatsuit. The rubber gear, you know, that they wear when they're running around and shit, and uh, it just took forever for him to get on clothes to even get on that scale. And yeah. you know, obviously he knew it was going to happen. And Bader got twenty percent of his purse, which is great for Bader because that twenty percent of Rampage's purse was more than uh, Bader's win bonus. You know what I mean? So it's oh yeah, dude, him. that's probably more than Bader would make in two fights if Bader lost like you know two in a row or, or won one and lost one and didn't get a, a fight of the night bonus. I mean, Rampage makes yeah. serious money, you know. Um, Absolutely. But so Dan Henderson like, came yeah, out. Fight him. Dan Henderson came out and said something. I don't know. Uh, I don't think he's looking to fight Rampage because that would be a step back. Because Dan Henderson is basically yeah. the third, you know, the third best two hundred fiver on the planet right now, waiting on Rashad and and John Jones, and he, he would be open to a fight somewhere. But I don't think he would take the Rampage fight. But he did no. say that uh, it looked like, you know, he said Bader looked good. Bader executed the game plan, came to fight. Looks like Rampage came to collect the check. And he said his gut was hanging oh. past his dinky dude. It was. 
Wow. The Rampage uh, did give us some of the uh, Pride Rampage because Bader went for you know a single and Rampage timed it perfectly, lifted him up and slammed him like the old Rampage and. I that thought killed Ryan Bader. I thought he broke his neck. Like in, in the replay, it looked worse for his arm, uh, the way it folded under. Bader said he didn't feel the arm because he was basically out on his feet for, you know, about a minute after that. He said he was completely out of it, didn't know where he was, and when he got to the corner, he had no fucking clue whether he was getting woken up by a flashlight or he was still in the fight. So <laughs> I can't yeah, imagine dude, what that would feel amazing. like, dude, either. Could you imagine that, being in a ring with a dude who's like Rampage, let alone a Rampage who's able to be even heavier than he normally is, and you don't know where dude, you are? <sighs> I I almost marked out as much as I did when Lex Luger slammed Yokozuna. Oh, no, the intrepid, you know? You better That's believe how amazing it, dude. that was. An American flag <laughs> t-shirt. <laughs> America wins again, you know? It was fucking amazing. But, Especially when you know, I mean, man's pulling the strings. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, I mean, obviously Rampage, you know, he, he there's always been all this rumors and all the shit that flies around that isn't like training and all that kind of shit. This time, you know, it was that was probably part of it, but I believe the guy got injured. I think this is the first time too. he ever missed weight, yeah. you know, so... You know, you can definitely believe that, but it probably doesn't help that the guy takes it easy in his workouts. Obviously, the dude is, you know, he's an aggressive dude. He's an alpha dude, you know, and he can fight at the drop of a hat. He's got no problem with that, but when you're fighting at the elite level, especially when you're starting to get older, you need to fucking buckle it buckle it up and, and just do what you got to do to get yeah. better and stay competitive, you know, because and, and, yeah. Rampage hanging around means makes no sense if he isn't going to fucking be serious about it. And like he said, like he, he's a guy who hasn't missed weight in his career really ever, although he doesn't like to train. It's never been a huge issue for him. But, you know, I, I think the bottom line, what it comes down to, and we've seen in the last couple fights, Rampage didn't get his road work in. <laughs> Rampage likes to break it down like kid, like Dynamite Kid in Mike Tyson's Punch Out, where he's pulling yep. coach on the bicycle, running over the New York City skyline. <laughs> Rampage likes to get on the, you know, get on the road work. And Rashad said, "That's great if you're running a fucking marathon, but I'm coming to fuck your shit up when they were training." Because that's, that's how Rampage equates a successful, uh, you know, camp. He did it with Rashad. He did it with John Jones. You know, oh man, I'm so ready. Every camp is the best camp I've ever had, and oh, I've just been running for miles. And they're dude, all like, "Well, you... great, dude, but that doesn't do shit. Why are you running for miles?" Yeah. Well, you know, of course, you know, it's beating a dead horse now, but did you watch the post, post-fight press conference? I haven't yet, man, and you know what I was dying yeah, to? And I, I meant to watch it yesterday, was, but I didn't have a chance to. <laughs> this was Rampage's quote, dude, and it's basically exactly what you just said, but he's like, man, I'm telling you guys, you know, before the injury happened, this was the best you've ever seen Rampage before. You know, I mean, it was everything was strong. I have a new wrestling coach. I was trying to get back to my roots and everything. And, you know, my wrestling coach is, is on the Olympic team, and, and I was throwing him around practice. I mean, it was the best you've ever seen this rampage. And then, uh, you know, I mean, like you said, dude, he says it every fucking time. So even if he didn't get injured, you know, it's the same horse shit. You know, that's what Rampage always claims. And, and obviously, he's lying. Yeah, completely. And, you know, Rampage is a hype guy, right? He hypes himself up. I get it. And you know what? I, I love Rampage. There's no two ways about it. I think Rampage, sure. if he still wants to fight, he can still fight for a little bit because the motherfucker just knocks dudes out. So you can, he's a guy who, I mean, Liddell got punchy. Rampage has a chin of granite. I mean, Rampage could not be cont- fighting for titles, and he could easily do catchweight fights you know, for heavyweight because he's a guy who, in the tail end of his career, could just show up and knock somebody out. There's, there's no two ways about it, so that can be there. But if Rampage made weight, it wouldn't have mattered, dude, because it was the game plan. It's not like Bader basically chased them. It's not like they were sprinting and running around and trying to run mileage, and that's why Rampage didn't win the fight. It didn't matter. A lighter Rampage just would have been able to have been tossed around a little bit more by a jacked-up Bader. So I don't really get the logic that that would have changed the fight. It was all about, was Bader going to put the game plan forth that we all hoped he would? He said he would, and he actually implemented. And I was worried he was trying to set Rampage up and not actually take him down. He was just talking shit the whole time, and he was trying to lull him into a false sense. But he didn't, and Vader was smart about it, because he did do what he said he was going to do, but in the first round, he was working his jab. He said it. I'm going to see. He wanted to stay on his feet and work his jab, and then he was going to work. He knew he had three rounds to get it to the ground and do what he needed to do. And I think Rampage right away was just looking to either knock him out quick, or he was looking for Vader to run across the ring like Brock Lesnar and just try to take him down (laughs) for 15 minutes. It just wasn't what was going to happen. 
Bader's a good fighter, dude. There's no two ways about it. Yeah. No, no, definitely. Uh, Bill Brown once said that apparently Rampage said he didn't train at Muscle Farm this time because it was too cold up there, so instead he went and trained at his own gym. So, mm. you know, draw your own conclusions, people, okay? And I, I, I but, bet all uh, of a sudden Muscle Farm would have had somebody who had, was friends with Brian Bader and actually gave information this time. I mean, you know, it, it's always something, dude. Yeah. I guess, well, uh, you know, Obviously, we've said a lot about Rampage. Let's move on to a guy who I don't think has ever missed weight for a fight. And I'm talking about uh, the Super Samoan, Mark Hunt. And uh, <laughs> I was actually really, <laughs> you know, 265 is a tough tough mark to miss. You know Especially I mean? when you're 5'8". So, when you're 5'8", yeah, it's really exactly. hard to get down to 265. <laughs> he, had two, he hit 264 on the scale at the way it's people, and he was still wearing his shorts and his socks. So, obviously, he had some room there, all right? So, there's and no reason Samoan, to make fun man. of this dude. Talk to yeah, God if you can't don't like it. He's Samoan, you know? Yeah, he can't help it, okay? But uh, I was actually really happy, you know? I know we all picked Czech Congo uh, last Monday, and I did say on the show, though, I would be rooting for Mark Hunt because it would be a nice story, and obviously we all pointed out how he fought nothing but the best of the best when he tried to make that transition from kickboxing to MMA when he went over to Pride. And, you know, so a lot of those losses probably might not have happened if he was actually gradually coming along. And Mark Hunt went in there. He took care of business, and he looked really good doing it. It wasn't even like it was a fluke. He was definitely uh, out uh, out striking Czech Congo pretty easily, and then he knocked him out in the first round. What did you think about it, Michael? I thought it was a good fight. Uh, I was excited for Mark Hunt, and, you know, I thought either way it didn't matter because Congo's a gatekeeper. Congo's a really good fighter, but he's never going to be a top three, top five heavyweight. And, you know, I don't know from here what you do with either of these guys, whoever won, right? I don't know what you do right. with Congo. He beat Mitrione, which they were probably pissed about because, you know, Meathead was climbing up and looking good. And, you know, with Mark Hunt, at this point, he's done nothing but surpass everything the USC could have hoped for. We hit it last week. They basically were going to pay him to stay home by inheriting the contract he wanted to fight. He's looked great in every fight, pretty much. And at this yeah. point, what do you do with him? I don't know who you give him. I, I would say give him a Pat Barry or a Stefan Struve, only because they're both kickboxers. They're both guys coming off wins. I mean, you know, I would say give him the Mitrione, but, I mean, Mitrione lost to Congo. Who Hunt just beats, he yeah. can't do it. But, I mean, you know what? Awesome for Hunt, dude, because maybe he'll get another contract out of it. He's 36, so, I mean, you know, let's be real. This guy isn't going on a title hunt. But he's a no. guy that nobody wants to see at heavyweight. I don't give a fuck who you are. No, absolutely not. And the thing is, is like, you know, uh, like I said, for sentimental reasons, just because, you know, he seems like a, a pretty nice dude overall, and, and maybe he did get a raw deal in it. Like I said, I was pulling heavy for him, but the dude's a fucking warrior. Dana White went said, obviously, this FX card coming up on Friday is in Sydney, and he said to Dana, when Dana went into the locker room, that uh, I, I didn't take any injuries, I want to fight in, in, in Australia. And Dana's like, well, we got two cards coming up. I guess we can get you on the second card. And Mark Hunt said to him, no, I want to fight Friday. I want to fight Friday, and then and Dana was like, "Slow down, dude. <laughs> There's no way we can fit it in, and you wouldn't even be cleared for it. Just slow down. We'll definitely get you on the other card." And then Dana said he, at the press conference, also, you know, his record is deceiving. He's a really talented dude, and he he was totally wrong about the guy. And I'm going to tell you this: after the way he took care of Czech Congo, he's in the mix, which is crazy since the guy's got an eight and seven record. But so obviously he is going to be set up with a guy like you said, Michael, because they're going to see how far they can ride this Mark Hunt train. Well, I mean, why not? You know, at this point they'll probably give him, a, you know, maybe a two-fight deal. I don't think Hunt would take a fight-by-fight fight deal because I don't, I don't know if the UFC is too keen on that one. And let's be real, every fight right. with every contract with the UFC is a fight-by-fight fight deal. If they don't like you, Absolutely. you're gone. So we'll yeah, see. But, you know what, Hunt sticks around. He, he gets, you know, an, another shot. And, I mean, Hunt's two wins away from getting the title shot, dude. I don't care how you look at it. Pretty him. much. Yeah, that's exactly. And basically that's what Dana said because they said that what you said he's in the mix. Does that mean he's, like, in the mix? And Dana said, I mean he's in the mix, okay? He's, he's very underrated. And, you know, that was it. And, and he, he, just, he just said, I, I, I couldn't apologize to this guy enough after his last fight and now – after this, he, he's just one of my favorite fighters ever. And so, I mean, he's in the good graces of Zuffa now. They don't, I don't think they want to let him go. You know, obviously they like going to Australia, and they know he's a giant draw, so they're banking on putting him on that second card towards the end of the year. Talk about a 180. Yeah, totally, dude. Now I'm going to tell you about somebody who's probably not going to get a second life in, uh, in yeah. the UFC. It's uh, Yoshihiro no. Sexyama. Akiyama. No, Joe Shields uh, is not getting a second life. They should get rid of him. Oh, you son of a 
bitch. You know what? Dude. I'm going to take this one again real quick because obviously I didn't like the way you started it off. I did want to throw it over to you. But obviously Sexyama, of course, lost his I, fourth I fight just in a row. That. I've lost my privilege. <laughs> I'm going home without dessert. <laughs> You're gonna you don't punish me. Speak on this one, ever. Okay, <laughs> I'm on Jake Shields out. did what he needed to do. Don't you speak out of turn. You. you shut your mouth when you're talking to me. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't leave Jakey alone, all right? Didn't he look good on on Saturday? You go ahead, because I gotta I gotta fucking stick my finger down my throat, and then I'll give my uh, my analysis. Uh, okay. Listen, I will admit, I think Jake Shields looked pretty good. His stand-up game obviously was better than Akiyama's. Akiyama <laughs> obviously hits harder. Obviously hits harder than Jake Shields, okay? But, uh, you know, he was definitely outpointing him on the feet. Akiyama was real tough to take down with his judo background. He had some sweet judo trips, uh, which, which Jake admitted in, in the press conference. Took him by surprise. But he knew the guy was a, a uh, I forget what level Dan, of a, of a judoka uh, Akiyama is. So he knew he, w- he probably wasn't really going to be able to get the fight to the ground that easily. And uh, when he got tripped, he said, okay, well, now i got to look for it from here on out because... So he, he was worried that he stole that round when that happened. But, uh, you know, we've commented on it before, and it is obvious. You know, Jake does have what we refer to as pillow hands. So if he, the problem with that is is if he can't get a guy down, you know, he, I feel he was in danger in that entire fight if Akiyama only landed a solid shot, even though Jake, with the exception of the Ellenberger fight, has shown to have a, have a pretty uh, strong chin and not go out easily. But if Akiyama would have landed the right shot at the right time, he was in danger. But... He was definitely lighter on his feet. He scored uh, what he needed to score on the feet. And um, then he had Akiyama's back for, I think, like a minute and a half, two minutes in the uh, third round. So, obviously, that sealed it, you know, gave him the last round. But, uh, you know, I was happy to see Jay get back in the win column. Um, he's looking thinner and smaller. He's looking more like it's one of the 70-pound build again. So, I'm assuming this is where he plans to stay. He isn't going to experiment with going up to 185 anymore. One thing I can't take away from Shields, as much as I, I despise him and, and I don't like him as a fighter, He's got a great chin. Ellen Berger yeah. is a, hits like a truck. Diego is a freak. That's the only reason Diego didn't go out, and Diego almost got put out. We've never seen Diego almost go out, and that would have been two guys in a row that Ellen Berger knocked out that just it's unfathomable normally. Absolutely. Um, I mean, you know, I, I need you to just take this with a grain of salt. I need you to calm down. I'm going to ask you to okay. actually put your breathing into place right now. Okay. And I, I'm zip my pants say, up? That's it. I need you to just breathe with me. Just just ride with me for a minute, all right? Okay. We're just going to take right. a little stroll. One, two. All right. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jake Shield's striking is so elementary, it's, it's embarrassing. I mean, he was just – he throws out with just no conviction. It's just a pawing little jab, and even his kicks are little chip kicks. It looks like he's never struck before. And I don't know – see, somebody must have pillow hands – but I don't even think it's that, dude. I, he just throws it with zero ferocity. I don't know what it is. and why, He's just a guy who should just not give a shit. He should be throwing to yeah. take people's heads off because if he gets taken down when he throws a punch, it works to his favor because he does have great jets. So I just don't, right. I don't get it. And at the end of the day, I'm not taking anything away from what he did. He was on an amazing run. He didn't have cupcakes over in Strike Force. He fought a lot of great fighters. I'm not saying anything against him. But if you take the body of work of Jake Shields as a UFC fighter, this guy should not be in the UFC. And I'm going to break it Ouch. down for you. I'm going Ouch. to break it down for you. The fight against Martin Campman, I'll give you a little bit. Okay, I guess he had a tough weight cut, and he was, you know, the UFC jitters, I understand. I understand it's a science because he had gone from 185 to 170 and kind of yo-yoed in his career. But I would say he should have been used to it then somewhat. And, and I understand it's tough to cut weight, but these guys – trained to peak at the right time and I just I know I'll never understand a fighter not making weight besides injury but he got a win over Campman that I I think was debatable at best I thought Campman gassed a little bit and he was disappointing and that's the only reason that Shields won the fight I thought Shields won the fight because they brought Jake Shields over to fight George St. Pierre I thought that definitely had something to do with it he lost to GSP when GSP was there for the taking he got knocked out by Ellenberger and he looked unimpressive against, against Akiyama. I, I just I don't understand, dude. To look at him, and I looked at that guy, for the money they're paying him, I would get him out. And Strike Force is weak. Throw him back in Strike Force, dude. He doesn't belong here. He doesn't. <clears throat> well, listen. He's not a top-five welterweight, bro. He's not. Listen, 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 listen. 
now that he's back to his welterweight physique and everything, and I will agree with you, he doesn't throw his strikes with conviction because I think, unfortunately, and and I, I have to concede the point to you that maybe you're right, and unless he can change his 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 fighting style, because I think he uses his strikes mainly as a setup for his own takedowns. And you're right, he should throw him harder, should throw him with more conviction, because if he gets taken down, he's ending up in the same spot that he wants to be anyway. Because, dude, if you look at the guy's actual like training and everything, he's a Muay Thai black belt, he's a Taekwondo black belt, he's a high-level Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, so the guy should be able to hit harder, should be able to put his t- punches together better. And I think he's really just using it as a setup tool, and guys know that. And in the UFC, obviously, when you got as deep a talent as it is, it's going to make a guy, unfortunately, I have to concede this point, a guy like him look weaker than he should. Obviously, if any of them hit the mat with him, they're in a lot of trouble. But striking-wise, and like you said, with George St. Pierre half blind, he should have been fucking knocking him out. I mean, he's great friends with Chuck Liddell, so you know he's trained with the guy. Chuck Liddell was screaming his face off. He was red in the front row telling him to throw Chuck Liddell's overhand right because George wouldn't be able to see it. And, and Jake either didn't hear him, or wasn't confident enough to throw it, you know, and I, I, I don't I don't know. I gotta agree with some of your points there, but I would like to think my boy Jake Shields can turn it around and start getting back on track in the welterweight division, be a force to reckon with. You know what I I'm saying? I just don't see where you go with him, Dubs, because if you break it down, George Saint is he better than any of these guys? George Saint Pierre, Carlos Condit, yep. Nick Diaz, yep. Ellen Berger, I put, I put, you know, I put like Rory McDonald in front of him right now, dude. I honestly wow, do. Wow, dude, you're out of your mind. I, I honestly do. I think if Rory McDonald fought Jake Shields right now, I think McDonald is a physical, a bigger kid. I think he kind of throws Jake Shields around a little bit, and I think he finishes him. I have no doubt. You're crazy. And I just don't think. I, I don't think I'm so. not interested in seeing him climb the ranks at 170 because he got there with an automatic, you know, title eliminator, and he's worked his way backwards. And I don't think he's a top five welterweight. I think he's a top maybe, I'll give you top seven, because I, and once I get to five, I, I do have a hard time saying that I can say, okay, outside of my hatred for you, that I should put yep. somebody in front of him. And if it's not McDonald, there's probably somebody. I think Diego would give him a hell of a fight. I think Koscheck would probably, I leave, his wrestling would take, I think where Koscheck might beat him. I think John Fitch would beat him. I think all these guys would he, beat him. He would destroy John Fitch. He'd destroy John Fitch. I think he would beat Carlos Condit. I don't want to say. Oh destroy. my God, dude! He he totally and and dude, they've they've grappled before him and John Fitch. Now it's not MMA throwing punches, but John Fitch doesn't have punching power. He totally dominated John Fitch in several grappling tournaments. Maybe he did, but back. Carlos Condit dubs. Take Carlos. Get rid of your love for a second. Take Carlos Condit right now and Jake Shields right now, and you think that Carlos Condit is going to lose to Jake Shields? Yes, Absolutely not. Dick Diaz is better than Jake Shields and trains in his camp. And Don Condit beat Jake Nick beat uh, beat Nick Diaz. I don't. I, think I don't was, believe you know, Condit beat, beat beat Nick Diaz. Well, and that's you know, where you and you I know, have a different of opinion box. there. I understand, yeah. but I think that Diaz right now is better than Jake Shields is at 170, and I think that it could have gone either way. I'm going to say I thought Condit won the fight, but I could understand where Nick may have won the fight, but I don't think Shields is at Nick's level at 170. I think Nick would fuck up Jake Shields, so there's no way I think that Carlos Condit wouldn't. I don't think he'd walk through him. I don't, I, I don't think as much as I tool around, I don't think anybody will walk through Jake Shields. He's just not built like that. The guy's been fighting too long, and he is good. I don't think anybody yeah. would walk through them. I think that the top five guys I just listed, I think if they fight ten times, Shields maybe wins two, and that's me being generous. Wow. I don't know if I agree with that. Obviously, if, if somehow Condit can stay off the mat against, against Shields, he's, he's got a much, much higher advantage there. But, but he's got I don't good know, enough, I still yeah. think the I, I still think the – no, not at the level of Shields, dude. He, he, but he's, dude so why he's, am I not he's seeing got great Jake Shields? Why am I not seeing Jake Shields choke people out and tap people out, dude? I haven't seen it. Since uh, he's been in the UFC, and St. Pierre was on the ground, and we've, he's been on he's been on the ground with other people. Akiyama took him down. I mean, as far as so then Jake should try to do something. And I understand he's got great jujitsu, bro. But I haven't seen him do any kind of jits that would tell me that Carlos Condit couldn't at least get himself in a position to get back up or defend against the submission. I haven't seen it from Shields. I know he has it. I know he's capable of it. I haven't seen it, dude. I haven't. Well, so he did, he really hasn't gotten a chance to use it. Obviously, with the Campman fight, you know, he's getting a shit big weight cut, he was pretty much gassed. And and as you said, it was more disappointing. So I'll agree with you on that too. He was ripe for the taking, and Campman was the biggest disappointment in that yeah. fight because Campman should have won that fight, and he couldn't. And that's why 
you know, I just don't, I'm not a huge fan of Cameron either. I just don't think he's got it in him to sack up when he has to, when he's got to dig deep. And uh, obviously with the George fight, eh, you know, I, I don't know what his problem was in that fight, why he didn't go after that eye more, what, what, what his problem was. Obviously George couldn't see. I don't know why he gave up on trying to get the takedowns uh, so early either. And obviously with the Ellenberger fight, Again, I feel it was a little quick. You can make the argument he was definitely dazed. You know, I'm not going to take it away from Ellenberger. Ellenberger definitely hurt him. But he didn't even get a chance to try to grapple in that fight. You know, Ellenberger came out and popped him, and that was it. So, you know, he just really hasn't had an opportunity. The Akiyama thing, he was he was tripped, and he was in a fucking bad position. And, you know, judo is, you know, probably right behind jiu-jitsu as, as one of the grappling arts. So at the same time, you know, he's a high-level judoka. I, I don't know if Jake wanted to be in in at, at in the uh, the non-advantageous position on the ground. You know what I'm saying? But well, what's start off with. his jits like? Do you know? He's like a third Dan or something like that. In, in his judo. jiu-jitsu. So, oh, jiu-jitsu? I'm sure yeah. he's not, you know, I'm sure he trains it, but he, he probably not even ranked in it because he relies on his judo. Right. More than anything. Yeah, no, to be so. that amazing at one, you know, one discipline. You know, not that right. other things are going to suffer, but you don't get to, a, you know, like a, yeah, like a third degree in something, and uh, you know, uh, you know, be a master of everything else. You just don't have enough time. But no, yeah, exactly. I don't know. I, I really don't. You know, I, I haven't seen Jake Shields put it on anybody that blew me away. And I like Shields. I do as much as I tool on him and stuff. I think he's a great fighter. I think he'll go down as one of, you know, one of the maybe the the all time in his prime. Maybe one of the top. 10, 15 welterweights ever, and that's because I'm saying I don't know what will come in the welterweight right. division, you know, so I don't want to rule it out. But, yeah, I'm just, just unimpressed in general. And I, to be honest, I don't want to see him fight. He, he's boring. I don't enjoy uh-huh. seeing him fight. I don't. He's boring. <laughs> he was sitting there. He looks like a little uh-huh. kid. He's got his buck teeth, and he's throwing his hands out, and he's kicking, and he's doing his little kicks, and he's thinking of his daddy. You know what? Fucking hang it up, dude. <laughs> Go sit and put a fucking rose on his grave every day like Marilyn Monroe and, and fucking, you know, Big Ouch. Joe the Shipper. I don't want to hear it. Listen, I'm going to say this. Agree to disagree. And maybe somebody out there could write a blog about it because I figure we're going to turn around. We're going to listen to this commercial. We're going to come back, and we're going to wrap up this card, and we're going to jump into the next two cards because you and I have been running off the mouth. So do uh, you like blogs, Michael? Uh, I love them, especially when Nick Frank does them and doesn't come here. Yeah, exactly. So we better be working on one right now for this. <laughs> a new era has dawned in blogging. Log on to the xlog.com and experience new standards and quality in commentary and analysis. Powered by rotoexperts.com, the xlog.com brings together the top expert bloggers with all the very best <coughs> it has to offer. You don't have to search for the most compelling and entertaining posts and writers anymore. They will be at your one central hub for high quality. So join us as a new revolution begins in sports and entertainment only at the xlog.com. That's T H E X L O G dot com. Bumping at bumping at thumping at bumping at 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 You should have called me versus Tim Bouch. This was the fight that fucked us. Um, I figure we'll blaze through these because we got to get into the next one. Yeah, um, no doubt. Uh, you, you hit this one up, and I'll probably just go, uh-huh, 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 uh-
Uh-huh. That's perfect. That's what I want in my women, too. So hopefully my future wife. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? She probably didn't come. You know why? Because she never does. And you believe her? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, Franco really stole it here. We laughed at him about to picking Tim Bosch. Okami, yeah. I really thought was going to come out, you know, looking to, to get back on the, the winning track. He's fighting in front of his brethren. Oh, everything's looking good. He's pretty much handling his business the first two rounds. Just seems to be a better fighter than Bosch. Bosch, you know, he's, he's you know, he might be at his home at 185, but... Um, you know, Bosch hung in there. He was tough as shit. He basically got the crap kicked out of him for two rounds. He threw a, a, a right kick that I think grazed Okami, but I don't even, at first it looked like that's what kind of put him out, but actually it looked like a right hand followed up for, by, from the kick, really staggered Okami, and then he just had a really yeah. weird motion. He had his left hand on the backside of Okami's head, so basically in between himself and Okami, so it was just like it was a little tie clinch with one hand, and it was the wrong hand. And that's why I think Okami was out on his feet, because all Okami had to do was just move in his opposite direction, and he was out of it. And it looked like Anderson Silva against Rich Franklin with a tie clinch, you know? So yeah. it was only one hand. And then he got hit with three huge uppercuts, and then another one that just absolutely put him out. Okami really has never looked like that. Uh, you know, the Anderson Silva fight, but, I mean, give me a break. You take a number that Anderson Silva makes Okami look the way he does. Um, and, you know, even the Chael Sonnen fight, he just didn't have the wrestling and his judo couldn't come into play. But then he was winning the fight. Tim Bosch came out. Kudos to him. Bosch is now moving up. And, you know, uh, Okami's a good fighter. I don't know what they would have done with him. I don't know what they will do with him. But, you know, we can get Bosch in there with somebody who, who can bang maybe like a Lieben or, um, you know, whatever happens with Stan and Bisbing, if they wind up fighting or not, or, or you know, Mark Munoz needs an opponent. I thought Tim Bosch, you know, he went to, uh, to uh, what is that, 3-0 and now maybe? He might even be 4-0 at, uh, at 185, but I Bosch, think 4 now. Yeah, Bosch stood in there. He, he took a beating. He's a huge guy for 185, and, and you know what? He went into a hostile environment, and by hostile I mean golf clapping and silence, but <laughs> he... Um, he really went in there. He put it on Okami, and, you know, uh, if Nick didn't pick Bosch, I would have been excited about it because it was awesome. Oh, yeah. It was exciting. We had the Luazon and Pettis fight with the huge knockout, and then the next fight went to a decision, so everybody kind of had calmed down. It, it, the lull was kind of, you know, back in, and we were just back in the way the Japanese fans are, just kind of respectful and quiet, and then we got a huge knockout. So, I mean, hats off to Bosch. I'm excited to see what is next for him here. Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be something, but Okami, you got knocked the fuck out. How long you been waiting to drop that lazy? I'm just, I'm just swearing it lazy, and I play sound effects. But uh, yeah, that no, was an amazing fight. Moving on to the next one. Obviously, Nick had this one pi- uh, picked right. This is where things started going wrong with us. It pitted uh, the highly touted uh, featherweight prospect Hatsu Aoki versus uh, Palazuski and. Uh, you know, Palazuski's a tough dude. You know, he definitely uh, weathered the storm. He hung in there till the end. But like you pointed out, it was a decision. Hayoki definitely looked a lot more impressive this time out than he did against George Roop his first fight, which maybe that was attributed to some octagon jitters. You know, guys come in, they, they don't really know the length of the cage. Uh, obviously, the walls don't give like a ring. Um, Hayoki's used to fighting in a ring, ring with ropes and shit. So you know you got to give it to him. You got to give it to him. He definitely looked really good. He couldn't finish Bart, but you know what? Bart's a tough dude, so you can't really uh, fault him there. But you know, of course, it disappointed us because it started to put us in, in in the hole that we aren't going to be able to climb out of again. You know what I'm saying, brah? Yeah, man. I started to get it though with the Hayoki after that fight. I said, okay, I, I understand now yeah. a little bit. I'm not saying all right, I'm all over his nuts yet, but. Uh, yeah. He definitely looked like what we had been hearing about. Bart's a tough dude, but Dart, Bart did not look good at all. No. Uh, as far as no. early on in the fight, I mean, just the only reason he was still standing at the end was just to, uh, a testament to the brass ones that he, he walks around with all day. Um, so, yeah, Hayoki looked good, dude. There's no two ways about like it. Just, and we need something in that weight yeah. class, so I think it's better for all of us. Exactly, because, you know, Frankie wants his rematch, and he should get it, and hopefully they put it together. But, uh, you know, so you need somebody like Hayoki to look that good and look like he can actually compete for the title. And like you said, Anthony Pettis took care of business against Joe Lozon, knocking him out. What did you think of that head kick, brother? 
It was amazing. Um, you know, Pettis talked about all week last week that Joe, Joe Loazon is a great fighter. By no means was he sleeping on him. But he noticed in a lot of his fights that he goes to finish guys in the first round because, one, people aren't expecting it, and, two, um, you know, he kind of has a cardio issue himself historically, Loazon does. Right. So uh, I kind of expected Pettis to weather the storm. I mean, this guy is such a different level striker. He is so versatile it can come from anywhere and he baited joe into that that kick i mean he joe had yeah. covered up and he kind of did a little stutter step and joe dropped the right hand as if he was going to come to throw a left and the second he did it was shin to face and pettis is uh, uh, the only reason i hope he doesn't get a title shot is because i hope Fra- i think frankie should get it but pettis against henderson again would be fun i just don't think the timing's right um, but I wouldn't be upset with that fight because Pettis is awesome. This is what I wanted him to do when he came over to the UFC, and he, you know, he went for a ton of submissions against Guida, who Guida was the man for a while, who was that 1A in that weight class, waiting on Gray and Frankie to do their thing. But uh, you know, he lost there, and then you know, he had a, a nice win last time and a decision, and we got to see the Anthony Showtime Pettis this time that we've all been waiting on. This kid is 24 years old, and he's fucking scary good. Dude, he's ridiculous. Like I said last week, seeing him in that Guida fight, even though he didn't pull off those submissions, I mean, if it hit Yeah, if, if he had fought anybody other than, uh, than Clay Guida at that point, I, I think he probably wins that fight, too. Um, you know, Pettis is really a guy who is getting better every single time. We're seeing him fight better each time. I, I'm, 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 here, here. I'm here. No, I know you're back. Please I, I enter your password. Back in. Then press pound. Oh, listen to this. What do we got? Oh, voicemails? Goodness. Apparently, I don't know what happened. I don't know what I hit. Apparently, I don't know how to use my phone. Here, you go. You Please enter talking. your password. Then press pound. Because I'm going to try to call. I don't know what's going on here. This is the okay. new sound clip. Dub says right. he gets lazy and hits sound clips. <laughs> I think we're going to sue you, bro. Cannot process your entries. Please try again later. Nice. Goodbye. I'm, I'm sorry. Goodbye. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> That's All right. Hysterical. <laughs> Believe it or not, Dubs, the second you fell off, I found a way to bring it. I was sucking Pettis' cock, and then right. I was bringing it right back to I, I think Frankie should get the title shot, and Pettis right. shouldn't because I, I'm not done with Frankie. But my main thing is Frankie, everybody Frankie fought, he had to fight again immediately. He did it with BJ. He had to fight him immediately. Gray right. Maynard, it was a draw. I get it. But if you don't give Frankie Edgar a shot here, it's bullshit. But it, what worries me is they probably won't because all we've heard about is Frankie should go to 145, and all Dana wants him to do is go to 145, and this is what's Absolutely. going to put him there because there's nobody for Jose Aldo to fight. Hayoki isn't ready for Jose Aldo. Nope. There's nobody for Aldo to fight. This is Dana's chance. What's he going to do, take the belt from Frankie when he has it and make him go to 145? He can't do it. This is Dana White's wet dream. I think that's even more oh, yeah. the reason he came out and said, oh, I think Frankie won the fight. But, you know, he's going to come out and say, Frankie, look at the damage you took. Look at your face. If you go to 145 outside of Aldo, you're going to be the biggest guy down there. It's going to be a complete 180, but I think Frankie should get it. I don't see how you don't give it to him. There was controversy. You were going to give Diaz another shot at Condit, and he yep. wasn't even the champ. You're going to take the belt in a bullshit fight against when there's any kind of doubt from the, the champ, and you're not going to give him another shot. You're going to give it to Pettis. Pettis can go fight somebody else, man. They, they can find Absolutely. somebody for him to fight. I mean, the way it will break down, you can have uh, Nate Diaz and Miller fight in May. You can have Pettis fight the winner of that because Henderson and Frankie probably won't fight till July or August. So you could have them fight on the same. You could have them fight on the same. They could fight on the same card. Literally, yeah. the four oh, of them. Right, fight exactly. On the same and then card. guess what? Pettis gets the winner of that fight, and exactly. if Henderson holds the title. Then you make that. Then you really try to convince Frankie to go and, down. And everybody's you know okay what? with it. Exactly. And it, yeah, it, exactly. It, everybody's more at peace if Frankie loses. Henderson earned it. Pettis comes and gets the rematch against Henderson to fight again for the belt from their WEC days. And then Frankie goes to 145. You know Jose's still the champ. And then the UFC's still printing fucking money. Exactly. So, you know, everybody wins in that in that scenario, in my opinion. But like you said, dude, Dano's been trying to convince Frankie for a while, so they might pull the old screw job. But Frankie even said he pretty much wants that rematch, and he even said at the press conference, I've had to do two immediate rematches uh, to, uh, in my title reign, I think I deserve this. So uh, we'll, we'll see it, what happens with after that. After that, yeah, after that be- fight and the beatings he's taken in all of his fights, this guy, this guy earned a fucking shot at one fit, at the belt again. Absolutely, dude. And uh, all right, I would love to keep going into it, but we got forty minutes, dude. So I think we're gonna have to speed round these fucking uh, 
these last two cards here, you know. Um, obviously, we were a little upset over the results on Saturday, so we had a lot to say. But uh, Friday was the first of two events this weekend. It had, it's UFC on F- FX2. And um, I think we should throw them into the point totals and say Franco gets a zero. You know, we'll, we'll discuss that during the week, of course. Um, like you said earlier, we're probably going to go 4-for-4 uh, four four on the Friday night card and 5-for-5 five five on the Saturday night card because of, they're probably going to get thrown out, and that's just yeah. our luck. But we can the main try, event but Franks on, won't be down. No, Franks won't be down at all. The main event on UFC on FX2 pits Tiago Pitbull Alves versus Martin the Hitman Campman. Obviously, everybody just heard what I had to say about those fellers, so I want to hear, <laughs> hear what you think of this one, Dolo. Uh, definitely two guys that we're very familiar with. These are guys that have been in the UFC for a long time. They've both fought elite-level competition for the majority of their stints in the UFC. Campman's 9-4. and four. He's coming off uh, you know, a tough decision victory over Rick Story, who you know, uh, a while ago, myself included, we were all touting stories as the guy who should get the title shot. Um, but, uh, you know, that might have been a little preemptive. But, you know, Campman, he's a good fighter. Prior to his last victory, he was coming off of, a, you know, a tough loss to Diego Sanchez, which, again, kind of came down to a lot of people thought that he got robbed. But, you know, Campman's got a propensity to wind up in decisions, and he tends to lose yep. them. So that's the opposite of Frankie, where Frankie doesn't knock people out. Campman's a, a kickboxer, and he's a big fighter at 170. He has shown he can knock guys out, so he needs to avoid that. But he lost to Diego and Shields um, in, in uh, tough decision victories. But he is back on the winning track. Alves, 28 years old. I feel like this kid's been fighting for 30 years because he was here when he was, like, 20. <laughs> he's been through the gamut. He's had, you know, a fucking brain aneurysm. This this kid's been through it all. He is a brick shit house at 170. This kid is, is absolutely huge, but in a different way than Campman. He's just, he's really, he's really Duck. built out. Um, you know, he's, he's, definitely, he's definitely a good fighter, man. He's won nine of his last 12 um, and 12 of his last 15, um, you know, and he has fought elite, elite level, elite level guys. He's got seven knockouts in his career, and uh, all of his, um, all, all of his fights have really been exciting. You know, he does have a little bit of a submission game, but I, I don't think he really is going to use it. Campman, you know, should hope he doesn't, because Campman doesn't really right. have a ground uh, defense or a sprawl, but. Um, you know, hopefully he's been training with Can- or with Randy enough, Campman, that he-, he can at least sprawl. But I don't think he has to worry about it. Both dudes love the bang. Um, I think it's going to be it's going to be an interesting fight. I worry because Campman does have cardio issues. But uh, you know, Tygo showed a propensity to gas as well. I'm completely up in the air on this, so I just feel like Campman right now is a back nice. on the winning track. I got Campman via decision. I, I have to agree with you, and uh, you know, like obviously, if it hits the mat, Diego Alves should have a uh, uh, a pretty distinct advantage, but I don't think that much. Uh, Campman trains in submission grappling, and just just about everything else. Obviously, Diego's got the wrestling background, but all the other uh, styles that they both train in, uh, they're basically the same, other than the wrestling and the submission grappling. The only problem with that is if it stays on the feet, Campman should have. Uh, a much better striking game. So i got to agree with you there, Mike. I, I don't think anybody's going to finish anybody in this fight. I think Campman wins unanimous decision. Uh, second, uh, the, the co-main event on the card pits Joseph. Uh, pick your own nickname here. He's got a couple of them. I'm going to go with Joby Wan Kenobi. I like it, you know. So Joseph, Joby Wan Kenobi, Betavides versus Yashuhiro Yurashit. Shatani. Hey. Shatani. Now, I've heard this guy's name before. Don't curse. Um, he's been fighting for a while. I'm not impressed with him. He's got six draws on his record. He's only got four losses and 19 wins. But going over his record, I just don't see him ever have fought anybody of the caliber of uh, the beefcake is also How the fuck do you uh, Joe six, Benavidez's name. How do you have six draws on your record? How the fuck I don't that know, happen? dude. He's tied <laughs> six times. It's fucking ridiculous. So you That's just stand the main there like Rocky and They just stand there and bang for 15 <laughs> rounds, and they just couldn't dare just give it to anybody six times? Holy yeah. shit. It just doesn't make any sense, you know. That's that's a big, big red flag for me. And like I said, the competition hasn't been anything that be, like Benavides has faced. So I feel Benavides is uh, going to put uh, Yuri Shatani out in the second round by way of submission. Okay. 
definitely fair. I'm along the same track. I just think it might be a little quicker. Um, you know, Ben Benitez wow. is, uh, you know, he's 2-0 and in the UFC. He's on a three-fight win streak. This kid's 15-2, and and his only two losses are to Dominic Cruz. Both right. losses were to Cruz, and they, they were both decisions. One was a UD, one was a split decision. He lost in a three-round fight a couple years ago, and then he lost in, in 2010 in a five-round title fight decision. So th- this kid is tough to put out. He's, he's trained with the alpha male camp, and that's, that's the crew he rolls with. He's definitely a submission specialist. Like I said, he's got 15 wins. Eight of them are by submission. He can throw his hands a little. I mean, he's got three knockouts, but, you know, he, he's really going to be looking to take this fight to the ground. Um, Absolutely. You know, Ur- Urshitani, heavy on the shit. Um, you know, not only, does he have, not only does he have six draws in his career, he's got fucking 17 fights that went to the cards of his 29 yeah. total. I forgot to mention that. You yeah. know, I mean, seriously. Uh, somehow this guy's on a five-fight win streak, and he's got six draws. So, yeah. um, you know, I don't know who he's been fighting. One, the one feather in his cap he does have is John Dodson. He beat John Dodson. It was early in Dodson's career, and Dodson's like 22 years old now. So yeah. I don't know when they fought, and you know, they were Dodson 13. Was, yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I, I think he was actually in his mother's womb. Um, you know, so that's really the only feather in his cap. Um, you know, if you have that many fights like like Shatani does, uh, you know, obviously you're a game fighter. You've been in 29 of them. You've been here before. I just don't understand, you know, how, how again, you have six draws. But I, I just see the Achilles heel fun. really being, uh, you know, the submission specialty of Ben ben, Benita, uh, ben Benitez. I got Ben Benitez first round submission. I think he goes in, he catches him quick, and probably gets him in a guillotine and chokes him out. That, that's probably a better pick. I also forgot to mention that your Shatani's 35 years old. And also, this is going to be the second fight of the, the four-person tournament to uh, set up the uh, flyweight uh, championship. So this is fights at 125 pounds. Um, the first fight ever at 125 pounds is the next fight that we're going to go over. It pits Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson versus Ian, I love this nickname now, Uncle <laughs> Creepy <laughs> McCall. <laughs> what a great Hello, name. Who you got this one? Uh, this this <laughs> Addition of the flyweight division is is everything that you know Demetrius Johnson could have hoped for. Um, you know, uber competitive at at the uh, the bantam weight level. I mean, he got himself in title contention and he fought Dominic Cruz, who I think it just expected to kind of manhandle Demetrius Johnson because he is extremely small for the bantam weight division and yeah. Cruz is extremely big. And he he couldn't finish Johnson, and he didn't even really have him in trouble. He was just able to manhandle him and, and kind of you know keep him uh, you know uh, down as far as bringing him down. But I sh- I misspoke. He certainly didn't keep him down because Johnson just kept popping up. I think Johnson is probably the early favorite to win this tournament. I think he's probably the best 125er that we all know about. Obviously, this division is going to get a lot more publicity, and there are probably guys you know no disrespect that we just have no clue about due to lack of exposure the UFC since they added the 155 pound division has just been amazing and they keep adding the lower weight divisions and it just does nothing but get better because these fights are fast they can take so many more shots from each other it's going to be really exciting um Uncle Creepy is certainly uh, not somebody to be taken lightly um you know in the WEC he was one and two it's a little deceiving um, you know, he did go the distance with Dominic Cruz, which, you know, seems to be, um, you know, the, what a lot of guys do, but to be in there with the guy, the level of Cruz certainly, uh, certainly takes some gusto and, and some, some real ability. Um, you know, he's moved to flyweight in 2011 and he's 3-0. So normally right. I would say, okay, he's 3-0, Johnson is making his debut in the UFC at flyweight. I would normally give it to the guy who's 3-0, and but when you have the size and stature that Johnson has, I mean, this guy's eating probably cheeseburgers and stuff and salami in his pockets when he's weighing in to make 135. So this kid is, is kind of different, so I don't want to just say, oh, McCall would win. Um, you know, he's got more experience, but I, I just think this is the natural fit for Demetrius Johnson. He was like Frankie when Frankie was fighting, you know, at, at different places, you know. It's a matter of circumstance, right? I mean, Johnson had to fight at 135 if he wanted to get into the UFC. Yeah, no choice, what he so. did. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I just think the debut of Johnson is a wash as far as it having any kind of validity. I have Johnson winning via decision. You know, 
I want to agree with that, and I do believe that they believe Demetrius Johnson is the favorite to win this tournament, and on paper I think he is. But like you pointed out, Ian McCall, he's a game fighter, dude, and you forgot to mention that he is the current. Now, I know it's not the best of talent over there, but it's some up-and-comers, and obviously they mainly focus on lower weight classes over at Tachi Palace Fights. And uh, he is the current flyweight champion over there. Ian McCall's no joke. It's not like Benavidez is getting a walkover, in my opinion, on paper anyway. Benavidez is getting Yuri Shatani, and I think that's a, pretty much a gimme. Whereas this year, I mean, I, I'm picking Ian McCall by decision. I think it's an upset. Um, Johnson, I do believe, will eventually be the 125-pound champ. I just think that this guy is, is definitely a game fighter, and he's been in fighting at 125 for a little while now. He's got a title. Um, like I said, he fights in an organization that focuses mainly on the smaller dudes, and uh, he's got a lot of experience with these smaller guys. So, I would, you know, obviously I wouldn't be shocked, and, and you're probably right on this one, Michael, but, you know, for the sake of good radio, I want to disagree with you anyway, but I, I did actually have that written down. I just think the guy's got more experience. He's got a title, and he's been fighting these real small guys uh, for a while now. So um, I think Johnson gets upset on Friday. Of course, I'm not going to be shocked if Johnson pulls it out since he is probably the favorite to win this thing. Um, I think he gets upset, and somewhere down the road during the year, he's probably going to end up wearing that gold anyway. So I got uh, Ian McCall wins unanimous decision. Uh, moving on to the last fight of the night, Pitts Court, the Crusher McGee versus Konstantinos Costa Filippo. Um, I got Court by unanimous decision. Uh, Filippo is a very tough dude. Um, but so is Court. You know, Court can definitely take a lot of punishment. He can hang in there. Um, he's uh, definitely got more submissions on his game, but he's 13-1. and one. Um, he, Last time he lost, it was early in his career. Uh, he was 5-0 and oh at the time. It was to Jeremy Horn, who has been around forever. He's got a lot of experience. I think the guy has over 100 fights. Um, he's like 89 and 22 or some shit like that. Now, I'm not saying that Jeremy Horn is a world beater by any any stretch, but he's fought some of the best of the best. I mean, he went the distance with Anderson Silva in his career. Um, so Jeremy Horn, especially for a guy who's only 5-0 and entering the world of MMA, to, to lose to him, you know, that's, that's nothing to be ashamed of. To have that to be the only loss on your record, especially early on, uh, proves that Court McGee is a tough dude to put out. So, um, uh, Constantinos, yeah, he's, he's definitely on the rise, but I think uh, – McGee's going to stop him. He's not going to. He's not going to finish the fight. But I think it's going to. They're going to make it to the cards, and McGee's going to win a unanimous decision. I mean, McGee has an unbelievable chin, and it's it's certainly going to get tested. He better he better bring his chin here. Um, I mean, yeah. Philippu is is he's two and one in the UFC. Um, he, he he did beat Jorge Rivera, who you know, game fighter, a guy who had a, a really I good career. He had a fighter. Uh, I mean, come on, dude. As much as I, I like to Jorge Rivera, I mean, that guy's had uh, a kidding. career that most guys would you know would dream of having. So I know, I know. Uh, no, I know. Um, you know, but yeah, no. Philippu is he's he's a tough dude, man. This is not them feeding Court somebody and trying to pump Court up. Um, you know, he's he's unbeaten in ten of his last eleven. Philippu, he's he's won you know ten, he's won ten fights and he had a no contest in there somewhere. Um, you know, he doesn't quite rank like Hitachi. He doesn't have six draws or no contests, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's got to carry some kind of weight. Um, Absolutely. You know he's 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 definitely a striker. Uh, Philip who's got five knockouts and one sub. Um, you know over his career he was three and zero as a pro boxer. So this kid has hands for days. Court has shown a propensity just to have a granite chin and an unbelievable work ethic. He's just a guy that continues to come. You can hit him with anything, and, oh, and he just oh. really uh, you know it's just he, it's everywhere. You need trash bags. There's so much cum. Um, <laughs> But uh, you know, slide it plus Jeez. for what it's worth, he did kill himself with heroin, and that was not so true. And I don't think. Well, that's true. That's true. But I haven't seen you take a punch like Court. Uh, I think if you're going point. needle for needle, needle vein, uh, vein for vein, my money's on my man here. But All right. I'm saying, you know, you know, uh, I don't think anybody is really a winner here, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you know, Court is—he's an excellent fighter, like you alluded to. He fought Jeremy Horn, who has been w in with the best of the best across a couple, you know, decades, dude. You don't oh, yeah. have over 100 fights and, and, you know, not fight guys that are on their tail end of their career and their prime early on, the whole gamut. It was probably a really good thing for Court to, to fight a guy, you know, I don't know, that early. If You know, it might not have been different later in his career, and Court maybe wins the fight. But I have Court actually catching Philippou. 
And it's not oh, disrespectful wow. to Philippou. I think Philippou's got great hands. You know, to throw a punch, you've got to be able to take a punch. I get it. He's been in enough fights that he could probably obviously take a punch. I think Court's pretty heavy-handed. I think Court is going to surprise him. I think Philippou's going to be excited that he sees Court come out and actually trade hands with him. I don't think Court will try to go right to the ground. And I think Court catches him in the first round and puts him out. Wow. wow. I, that's, a, that's a bold pick. I, I... I'm not going to lie, dude. I, I, I wanted to pick that. I just, you know, I, I, there's not a lot of knockouts on Court's career. They're mostly submissions, so that's why I didn't, you know why didn't I really go that did route, it? but I wouldn't be shocked. Do you want to know why that? I really did it? Why? Because it doesn't fucking count. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, good point. You know what, then? Court by, uh, I don't know, ripping Philippou's arm off. The by throat job. Know. But that's why I know. This is what I alluded to, you know, earlier on in the show. That's why I know I'm going to go perfect. Because I'm just of not going to care, and I'm going to have the balls to just, you know, just pick like I, you know, like I, I feel whatever pops in my head, and it's probably going to work out. And Franco's going to cry; it doesn't count, and all this other shit. Even with my bold picks, I would love it if Franco would call in on your sister show on, uh, you know, I the hope sister so. show to this show on on Wednesday, and let Franco call in and give his picks really quick. He could he could call you guys for five ten minutes, run through his picks, bullshit, and get off the phone if he wants to. That's an option. Would I ask him to? I'm going to ask him to, but yeah, I don't know if he will. You know, obviously, Agreed. what Michael's talking about, everybody, and everybody supported us because, you know, we, the people did actually listen to the show. That's, the show's called The Butcher Block, and it's either going to be on at 9.30 or 10. It depends on my mood on Wednesday nights, <laughs> and it's for two hours or it's one on hour or, or a half hour, depending on my mood. You all need okay. to get there at 9.30, and if it's on at 9.30, guess what? Christmas <laughs> come early. If it didn't, you better fucking deal with it. Exactly, and you better hope that I don't have the shits because I might be ending that show at ten minutes in if I got to go to the bathroom. So sorry. I would like to follow that by saying, as a disclaimer, I have nothing to do with that show. I am not a I am not a bad person or a racist, so do not take anything they say and associate it with me. I will be at church Radio on War. Wednesday night. That's why I don't do the show. <laughs> I am a big brother in the late afternoon, and then I go to church and I light a candle. So that's why I'm not going to be oh. there. But if you want to get down with Satan, check it out Wednesday night. I heard it was some good Damn. shit last week. I heard you had over 100 listeners over the course of the yep. week. I expect you to do nothing but dominate as we do. And why I'm upset is because now you get a whole other set of Howard Stern money for doing the second show. And it's unfair. Well, just, it, My $500 million is as much as your billion, and it's bullshit. <laughs> That's why I just don't. I can't get rid of it. You know, like you said, we were trying to fucking get rid of our cash. It's impossible. <laughs> That's why I decided to do the second show. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking you know, great. Not to go back to what you brought up, but you talked about needing trash bags for fucking all the loads of cum being shot all over the place from court. Um, we got a main event happening on Saturday during Strike Force, which pits the ladies. And I don't know if anybody's seen these two ladies. Well, they're both pretty sexy. Um, <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you were going to say, <laughs> but they're both pretty. <laughs> and I'd like to bring them home to meet my mother. Yeah. I didn't know where you were going to go with that. I was glad that you at least threw the sexy in so the seven-year-olds could pop the wood when they find their dick at least. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't want to go too far off the uh, the charts there, but you know what I'm saying. You know, I'm probably <laughs> going to be sitting there lathered up, all oiled up, just diddling myself as I sit here and watch this fight. But anyway, to get to the point, we got Misha Takedown Tate defending her title against Ronda Rowdy uh, Rousey. And I'm going to throw it over to you, Dolo. How do you see this one going? Uh, yeah, it's going to be good, man. You got uh, Misha Titty Fuck Tate, and you got Ronda mm. Cock Rocket Rousey. I think oh it's going to be good. I, I think we're going to get some nice box shots from the B side. Um, all joking aside, I mean, I've said it a million times, I you know, don't tend to get too much into the women's MMA, but that doesn't mean that they wouldn't just absolutely rip me limb from limb um, if they heard me talking. Um, In a good way. Oh, agreed, agreed. But this is actually going to be a really good fight. This is the only fight to make because Cyborg Santos, you know, has, you know, done steroids. She has a cock and she has an Adam's apple. But, you know, (laughs) then you had Gina Carano, who, you know, was the other one who was the big, you know, hype train back in the day. And obviously she hasn't fought in a while. She got smoked by Santos. And she, you know, had a movie that had some success with some major players in it. She's already doing another movie. She's not going to be fighting. Exactly. So these are actually really good fighters, these two. Um, it's it's going to be interesting. They dislike each other immensely, which is going to make it even better. Um, unfortunately, neither of them are doing steroids, so they probably won't knock each other out. But 
I, yeah. I think that just means it's more time to watch them get sweaty and, and fight. But, um, you know, Misha Tate really is an actually uh, a well-rounded fighter. She's really comfortable wherever it goes, whether it's on her back or on her knees. Um, she, she has five submission victories and, uh, and three knockouts and four decisions. So, you know, she really is balanced. She can really show, she's shown that she can take the fight wherever it needs to go and she can win. She, she can really finish you any way she needs to, or she's happy to go to the cards. Um, you know, she won the title via arm bar. So, you know, she certainly has a submission game. Rousey's a newcomer to the sport. She's only 4-0. Um, she's really a polarizing figure. She's opinionated, not surprising. She has trained with the Diaz brothers, so it's not surprising that she's a bit of a polarizing figure. She definitely talked her way into this title shot, not meaning she didn't deserve it, but she just made it to where they had no choice because there were no options as far as anybody wanted to see Misha Tate fight. Uh, against and then you know with Rousey talking shit it just kind of helped. Um, she's four and zero all with arm bars, which I thought was pretty much an indictment of anyone that has fought her outside of the first person. I mean, how do four people get caught in arm bars? Is she I don't know. is she Hoist Gracie? That's the only reason I'll accept that four people get caught in arm bars. I don't see Misha Tate getting caught in an arm bar here. I think it's going to be a good fight. I mean, Rousey's Rousey's pretty big, but so is Tate. Um, I have Tate winning in a hard fought decision. Nice, nice. I, I gotta agree. Bill Brown once says this is piss break fight. Uh, he also wants to point out that <laughs> these girls, these girls. Meanwhile, it's the main event, son of a bitch, right? Um, he, and he also <laughs> says these girls fight. are are solid sevens at best. And I just want to let him, I want to remind him that sevens above average if we're rating on a scale of ten. That's and right. also he says, you know, not that he wants to throw stones. He's a four or five at best. But also I have to agree with him here. He says because he has balls, we round up. I agree. I definitely agree. I agree uh, with that. I love you know, how you cause... rated himself a four or five. He's very modern. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But uh, I, I definitely got to agree with you, 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 Mike, on the outcome of the fight. Now, Ronda Rousey, you know, she definitely has all the bravado in the world, and she even admits it's the hype fights and shit. And uh, good for her. You know, she's she's a pretty girl. Misha's a pretty girl. She knows she's using – she even admits she's kind of using her looks because, you know, there isn't a lot um, – there, there actually is a, a decent amount of uh, women MMA fighters that are, that are decent looking and everything, but they don't really work it. And Ronda Rousey's trying to use that to, to bring more attention to the sport, which is good. Um, she's got all the reason to be cocky because, like I pointed out, um, and I could be wrong about uh, – uh, sexy Yama's level of uh, uh, of judoka, but uh, uh, Ronda Rousey is a fourth level Dan in uh, judo. Um, so she is for being a newcomer in the sport at four and uh in mixed martial arts. She is a pretty tough test for anybody. Now, with that said, I gotta agree with you. I think she jumped a lot of people for this title shot. I think Misha Tate has been in the fight game long enough. She obviously proved it against Marlis Kunin, who is one, rated one of the best women fighters in the world. Um, you know, obviously Kunin got knocked out by uh, Cyborg, but who the fuck doesn't? You know, I mean, it's impossible not to. With what that happens when you're pumping steroids into your body and you have a penis? In it, the fight exactly. Women. So that's no shame. Then Kunin went down. She dropped to 135, won the belt. Tate took it from her in a, in, in a submission, which is normally uh, Marlou's game. So, you know, Tate is a game fighter. This is why I got to agree with you with the outcome. I think Tate is going to take the, a hard-fought, unanimous decision, but I don't think Rousey can be taken lightly. I think this is probably going to be mostly a ground war because that's where Rousey wants it. Uh, nobody's really seen her hands, you know. Um, so that could be a, that could be a big question mark, you know. Uh, Tate definitely can throw hands. Um, you know, she's not the best, but at the same time, she should be better at a better level than Rousey. So uh, I got to agree with you here. I think Misha Tate's going to retain that title. Um, and then Sarah Kaufman is actually fighting on the undercard, who is the last to beat Misha Tate, who probably should actually have this title shot. As long as she wins her fight on Saturday, she'll she'll probably be getting the next shot at Misha Tate or even Ronda Rousey if she pulls off the upset. But I definitely got to agree with you. Misha Tate's coming home with the belt, unanimous decision there. And I'm going to interject here, Dubs, and I'm going to give all of our fans what they want. And I know Cyborg Santos tested positive for steroids, but for all of our loyal listeners, there was probably about eight months ago uh, a debate between Dubs and myself and then Bill Brown one hopped in on the phone uh, where Dubs <laughs> said he could easily take a punch to the mm -hmm. face from Cyborg Santos and be fine. He even said it, he could take a couple, that he really wasn't worried about it. And uh, I, I just completely douched him out and just berated him. And then his brother, Bill Brown, one hopped on and just said, dude, I, I love you to death. I've seen you take 
huge shots from kids growing up, including him. There is no way that you could take a shot from her. I want everyone to know that, you know, when we get huge, because we all know it's inevitable, and we can all exactly. quit our jobs, and we can do radio shows from four hours a morning, you know, uh, in the city or whatever, oh, Cyborg great. Santos will come in, hopefully, and okay. she can test positive for roids. She cannot. I would actually like to have her piss in a cup standing just to see if she can test pisses hot or not, because it'll be fun. Either way, the roids still are in play. You still have to take the shot to the face. All right. And I don't mean Bukaki. I, I, I don't mean Bukaki. I mean oh. I mean oh, I thought I was just going to be kneeling in front. But uh, I'll still say I'm game for that. All right? I'll even hold the piss cup for her when we test her. And then when it comes back dirty and I'm still standing and smiling, you know, and then I prove my point 100%. You know, it's <laughs> when you're standing and smiling you know, and you have no teeth, when you smile like a <laughs> hockey player, and it re- you realize that you're not standing, you're actually leaning against the wall and you fell through it. <laughs> well, dude, listen, that's great and all, but we got four more fights to hit on this card. Um, we got 16, well, probably a little less than 16 because this counter is never right because it likes to fuck with me. So Sounds we're going like to do four speed minutes round. To fight to me, my man. I'm not a math major, but. Speed round. Well, you know, obviously. We'll see how it goes. We'll try to finish these up quick. Uh, KJ Nunes did pass his physical. He's ready to go on Saturday night. So uh, the co-main event pits KJ Nunes versus Josh the Punk Thompson. I believe this fight is kind of, they haven't said it, but it's probably a title eliminator for the next to face Gilbert Melendez. Uh, who you got on this one, dude? Uh, it's going to be interesting. I, I am going with my boy KJ. Um, KJ, obviously, Beautiful we've hair. all been there, right? We, we know what the story is with KJ. Got great hands, excellent boxing, sweet hair, dreamy face, smooth cock, right? Mm-hmm. What else could yeah. you ask for out of a fighter? Um, you know, he cut his, his golden locks like Samson for Franco, but uh, he is a really good fighter. It, you know, Gil Melendez has to feel like the, just the, the bastard stepchild. He, he, oh, basically, yeah. his talent is working against him because he's so good that the UFC is trying to string along Showtime for some reason and keep this together, <laughs> so they're going to use Gil Melendez and say, look, we didn't take everybody. We took 99.5% uh, of all your fighters, but we did happen to leave one of the top three light, uh, heavy, uh, lightweights in the world. Um, but this yeah. is a title eliminator. Josh Thompson is no joke, dude. He's fought in a lot of different uh, organizations. He did have you know, a stint in the UFC. Um, you know, my boy KJ knocked out uh, George Grizzell. So that's the main reason I'm going to that's go. That's all you need. Yeah, I really would have to. I, I would have to think that K.J. Noons either had the, the liquid cast in his glove like Margarito or he was just Obviously. allowed to use a brick against Jorge because I, I just don't see how that would, would work. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, basically, um, you know, he, he did lose in all seriousness Noons to uh, Jorge Masvidal who just lost to, uh, to our boy uh, Gil Melendez. So Noons has really fought a lead level comp. He's fought Diaz twice. I just think he's going to be a little bit too much for Thompson. Um, I, I think the hands will, you know, pretty much come into play because Thompson's a tough dude. He's not a guy who's going to say KJ has good hands, so I'm just going to basically try to take him down. He's probably going to stand and bang. I got KJ Noon's first round knockout. Uh, wow, I didn't go that aggressive. I got Noon's by unanimous decision because I, I definitely uh, respect uh, the, the punk a little bit more than you, I guess. But uh, yeah, Noon's definitely got the advantage on the stand up uh, in every which way it could go. It's got to get to the ground for for Thompson to have. Um, a shot, but and in, in, <clears throat> but KJ showed in the last fight that he's definitely got uh, pretty good defense to keep it on the feet, and um, I, I think Newman's definitely take, comes away with the unanimous decision. Um, you know, plus the, the Josh Thompson has been injured a lot lately. Um, you know, uh, I think that might uh, might might come into play too because now he's got to step back up and fight. You know, a top dog in the division. Uh, he's had a couple fights in lower promotions, so the competition that he fought. Uh, hasn't been on the same level, so he's going to be stepping back in against the guy who can really bang with him, and I think is going to be a recipe for disaster now. I wouldn't be shocked if KJ puts him to sleep, but I just don't see it. I think it's a unanimous decision. Um, now we'll move on to another fight where a guy who definitely can put people to sleep, Paul Semtek Daly versus Kazuo Masaki, uh, also known as the Hitman. He stole that from Martin Kamen. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say Daly wins this uh, round one KO. Uh, Misaki's 24 and 11. Uh, Daly's 29 and 11 with 20 KOs, uh, seven decisions on his record. So you know the guy. Obviously, like I said, he's got heavy hands. Um, 
Kazuo hasn't fought since April of 2011, so there might be some ring rust in there too. Um, on top of that, I just think Daly's better at a lot of things than the guy, so I think he's going to put him to sleep in the first round. What do you think, Dolo? Yeah, I mean, Kazuo, is, he's on a four-fight losing streak, so that's just never good. He has fought a no. lot of tough guys. Um, you know, I mean, he's, he's got 37 fights, right? But he, he fought Dan Henderson, Nate Marquardt, Chris Lytle. Um, he, he lost to all of them, which there's no shame in that. You know, there are a lot of great fighters. He did take Jakey Poo Shields to a draw. One of his two hey. draws is Tilly, my Tilly. Well, good for him. Good um, for him. Yeah, Paul Daly is, is you know, he, he's a beast with his hands. He almost knocked Nick Diaz out. Um, you know, he's definitely a really good fighter. Now that this weight class, um, you know, is, is kind of depleted at welterweight, I think Daly could try to make a run. Um, you know, the thing that concerns me with Daly is any, as far as looking forward, any time he's stepped up in competition, you know, he, he really hasn't been up to snuff. His one, his first major fight in the UFC was the Koscheck. He lost the decision, got fired for the cheap shot after the bell, um, and then he lost to Diaz and he lost to Tyrone Woodley. So uh, I just don't. Obviously, this isn't the fight though. That's going to be the step up in competition between the ring rust and, and just the overall mediocrity of uh, of uh, Misaki. I see Daly having no problem with it, and uh, I have Daly in a first round knockout as well. Yeah, that's that's a pretty safe choice. Uh, moving on to the next fight. Uh, this was one that a uh, last-minute uh, substitution came in. Uh, Bristol Morunde uh, is fighting Ronaldo Jacar Souza. Now, I don't think you need to be a, a, a you know really smart to figure out how this one's most likely going to go. <laughs> uh, depending on what website you go to, either Morunde's fifteen and six, or maybe he's just twelve and six. Okay, um, I don't know. I was all over the place trying to find information on the guy, and you know what I came up with? He's going to lose. Now, I would like to see Jacar sub him out, but I don't think he is because if if Jakar can't land a submission, he certainly isn't. He doesn't have enough pop in his punches or kicks to knock anybody out, considering he has zero on his record. Um, so I'm going to say Jakar wins unanimous decision pretty easily. Easily, huh? Yeah. <sighs> wow. The guy's twelve and six or fifteen and six. I'm not sure. Yeah. No, I'm just trying to kill time. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll go 15 and 6 for the interest of strike force. Um, sure. You know, Souza, he, he's a good fighter. There's no two ways about it. He's been to the top of the mountain of the uh, the middleweight division. Like you said, 4 and 1 in his last 5. He's looking to climb back up for the middleweight title. Um, you know, he's hopefully he can he can get back up there cuz he's really one of the only, com- you know, like everybody else he's one of the only competitors left. <laughs> um, you know, over there, um, you know, he, he beat um, Matt Linland, um, Tim Kennedy, Robbie Lawler, and then he lost his belt to um, to Luke Rockhold, who is an absolute beast. So beast equals we will poach you and bring you to the UFC. So Maybe. Um, I don't, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that will happen. I think he's, he's, he's another one that they can make a case for. I mean, Gil is obviously king shit over there, and rightfully so. But if they're going to leave Gil there, they have to leave. Um, yeah. They have to leave. He's trapped. Yeah, uh, Rockhold over there. Um, you know, there there are some good fighters left, but I mean, you know, it's really few and far between. It's Gil. It's Rockhold. I mean, uh, King. I think King Mo is good, but I mean, King Mo almost lost his fucking leg to a staph infection yeah. uh, a week or so ago. Plus, tested positive. He looked like for shit. You Not know. to interrupt you, but th- there was a sighting before, uh, like Rampage and Congo went to uh, Japan. And he was literally driving around on, a, on one of those uh, scooters they give old people, King Mao. So he's not in good yeah. shape right now. No, they said he legitimately almost died, and they almost had to take his leg. It kind of got out of control quick. But uh, yeah. you know, not to mention that he vehemently denied doing steroids, and then he, he lied. was like, all right, shit, you caught me. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, Souza is certainly, you know, one of the better guys left. Uh, you know, M- M- Bristol is, uh, I have nothing on him, dude. I mean, the only one fight I know that he's won is against Rich, uh, Rich, what is it, Rich Antonito. Rich was on yeah. the Ultimate Fighter, uh, broke his hand, but he never really did anything in the UFC. Um, I, I just, I see Sousa pretty much, uh, uh, you know what, I, I was going to say win via decision. If this doesn't count, maybe I'll say first round knockout. But uh, what? no, first ever knockout. Uh, well, pff, dude, you got to be your boy Cerrone a couple months ago. I did. Uh, Cerrone right. is yeah a different kind of striker though. See, so, yeah, I, I got Absolutely. I got Souza. You know what? I got Souza second round sub because I don't think this I dude like can it. go the distance with him. I, I don't. I like, gonna, it. I, like gonna, it. I really don't think he can go the distance. 
Yeah, I'm going to base it purely off of no fact and nice. all opinion because I have nothing to go I, off of. But. I like it. I like it. That's what, you know, pretty much you're going to have to do it again for this next fight because I know I know one of the names on this paper. And I'm going to say the last fight on the card pits Scott Hands of Steel Smith. Or, if you want to call him the comeback kid, he really hasn't come back lately, though. So we're going to stick with Hands of Steel versus Lumumba Sayers. Scott Smith is returning to the 185-pound middleweight division because he lost, like, what was it, Michael, three straight at 170? Yeah, he did. Yeah, well, how do you see this one going? I see this being the quintessential um, strike force fight because they are literally trying to feed someone to Scott Smith. Um, you had alluded to it earlier in our discussions <laughs> yep. that it's really just to justify the money that they're paying him. Uh, so they have to give him a, a win. Uh, Franco is always the biggest proponent of Strike Force was known for that even when they were a separate entity from the UFC. They would literally yeah. just cart dudes out and just have them get their heads knocked off. So a lot of times when you see a fight where there's one guy you know who's good and another guy you don't, similar to the Sousa fight, uh, you know, a lot of times it's going to work out exactly how you think. Yes, it is set up. Someone it probably is going to get hurt and, you know, somehow got sanctioned. But, you know, Scott Smith, you know, he's a fighter, dude. But, you know, the, the day, you know, the, the knockout of Drago, it's carried you far enough, dude. Um, you know, when he had that amazing comeback, he took the body shot and caught Drago, uh, Pete Sell, who was coming in. And it was amazing. It was, you know, before the Congo uh, Pat Barry fight, it was the only thing that we'd ever seen happen like that. But, you know, since he's moved on, and, you know, he's been in some all right fights. He, you know, he, he had a little bit of gusto, got some good money off of his hype from the UFC, came over to Strike Force, had some decent fights against good fighters, you know, Kong Lee and a few others, but it just wasn't, uh, it wasn't meant to be. I think his true colors have come out. They're literally trying to feed this poor bastard to him. Uh, believe it or not, Lumumba Sayers is from America. Don't mean to be no. racist, but give me a fucking break. Nobody would yeah, have won that bet. Um, no. You know, he, he's a grappler. He, he he certainly, you know, I'm sure he's a game fighter, but, I I, I mean, he's one and one in strike force. He, he beat Antoine Britt via knockout. That was his last uh, his last win. That was back in November of 2011. And, uh, you know, then he had lost to Derek Brunson uh, via rear naked choke. I, I just, I don't know. He's five and two. I don't think he's had enough time. I think Smith being 17 and nine, it will be enough for him. And, and if Smith can't beat him, then, you know, it'd be, it'd be hysterical. It'd be great. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I got Smith first round knockout. What the fuck? You know, I'm giving Lumumba uh, a little bit more credit. I'm seeing a second round knockout just because I don't think Scott Smith, uh, with those rocks in his head, like Bill Brown once said, uh, really starts to get it going until he gets tagged around a little bit. A uh, little bit. So even though this guy really shouldn't be in the ring with Scott Smith, I think he's going to have a halfway decent first round where he's going to tag Scott Smith. And then you know, obviously by the second round. Scott Smith's going to fucking lay it on him and put him to sleep. Because I don't know if you know this, but Scott Smith has hands made of steel. Did you know that? I heard that. Yeah, well, you know what happens when you make steel connect with a fleshy face? What happens? People fucking die. So I'm going <laughs> to say Scott Smith <laughs> by uh, second round knockout. And uh, that, that's, that's really it for the card. We, it, the counter says we got about four minutes left. I'm going to say we got about two. So I'm going to throw this one at you, big big boy. Uh, Joe, you, you remember Joe Daddy Stevenson? Never heard of him. Well, I'm going to refresh memory. He was on The Ultimate Fighter 2, okay? Yeah. He won uh, The Ultimate Fighter 2 for the smaller weight division. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, obviously Rashad won for the higher weight division, you know. Um, he went into the UFC. He had some success, and then he started losing a lot, okay? So they cut him. Well, guess what? Joe what? Daddy Stevenson has just signed a multi-fight deal with the Resurrection Fighting Alliance. That sounds like a guy who needs a paycheck. <laughs> and as another man who needs a paycheck himself, I'd like to say I can smell my own and go get yours, dude. But you know what? I fucking hate Joe Stevenson. I always have. Uh, you I, know, really? I, I always, I, I always have. I just something rub, didn't rub me the right way with him. Um, wow. I just thought he was like always like I thought he was a pretty good fighter, but like all like you know like the the yelling like the. Oh, like when he was like hitting and like he's working so hard. Like I get it, dude. You're you're a worker. Great. I, he just never impressed me. I, I never. I thought you know it was when 155 was a little weaker. He got up there towards the title contention. I didn't think he, I didn't think he deserved it. But you know it is right. what it is, man. I'm sure he'll climb up the ranks over there. It'll be really hard. Oh, absolutely. I think his first fight is going to be for a title eliminator. So congrats to him. I think and, he's uh, you know, 
What? <laughs> did you just bring up Tim Cillian? You better believe I did, but I'll leave that for Wednesday because I can't imagine we already, more than we already seconds. annihilated him on Wednesday. So, yeah. you know, the poor bastard. I, I just, you know, from everything he said, I was begging to be in in the UFC. I, I think this is all. One of us is in deep trouble. That's all we could say about poor Tim Sylvia. All right, I think he's in a lot of trouble. He needs some paycheck. Pro Elite apparently ain't paying as well as the UFC because he wants to take his old pay to stay in, to get back in the UFC. But anyway, dude. Since I don't know if this counter is right, I'm going to wrap the show up. So, everybody, if you could, remember to check the Butcher Block out on Wednesday night, either at 9.30 or 10. I'm going to say 9.30, tentatively, okay? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, you know what? But just be surprised, okay? Be back here Wednesday night sometime around then. Uh, everybody, remember to check out Roto Experts. Check out the xlog.com. Uh, plug that dick bag, Nick Frank, for not being here, but check him out at, at Twitter at nfrankrotox. I think that's what it is. Myself at cauliflower, the number four ear. Dolo, I you can get me you. back here next week. That's all I want from you assholes. Once a week, that's it. I don't want anybody else nice. to know where I am. Well, all right, then. I guess we're cauliflower for the years, and we're tapping out. Stop.